demonic mm-hmm. sites. Then finally, the Kabbalah. The mm-hmm. Kabbalah was originally uh, basically esoteric knowledge mm-hmm. passed down between rabbis. Uh, as it's mm-hmm. described, it seems roughly like it's describing the origins of the universe, meaning physics. And it was saying that in the area of physics, people have a lot of conjectures and theories. And this is, you know, of like the year 500. And mostly they confuse themselves and don't get anywhere uh, useful. So the rabbinic uh, direction is mostly to focus on the legal code, learn how to be a good moral actor and study the philosophical underpinnings of that. And then eventually when you're wiser, you can develop into understanding the laws of the natural universe. I want to hear H's take on this. That was very helpful. I really on their revelation that. stuff or the uh, argument Happy to help. stuff? On, on their argument. Yeah, no, that, that really put a well, lot it together just, for me. It just strikes me that the argument they're offering is just like either reduces to a form of Leibniz's argument or the Kalam. I mean, the way Phaser sets it up is something along the lines of something exists, whatever exists, it is it contingent or necessary. If something is contingent, then it has an explanation, it has a cause. And that's basically just a version of the PSR. And then you can just run the same critique on the PSR, whether it's a critique from model collapse or from Cantor's theorem, or just ask what the argument for the PSR is, given that it's a synthetic proposition and not an analytic proposition. Guys, can I answer the question of the room? Dr. Khalil, did you have a response? To what Venus said. I mean, we've he didn't talked really about this before. Anything. He just referenced a bunch of other responses that he didn't give. Well, Khalil yeah, doesn't so, really have an answer. Like he just says, yeah, it's I, like I answered you. I showed, I showed that denying the Avicen and PSR is a contradiction. I showed it to you in two different ways, and then you called me childish. And then well, I had to leave you the room because I, well, I had to confused. leave the room because I actually have children who are childish. Oh, I can, I, I can reply. And then that was well, it. Yeah, well, you didn't show anything because what, what, actually what, I did. Uh, you you used the idea well, of a coin of a coin toss uh, as a refutation against me, but you didn't realize that your coin toss example uh, already uh, assumes the PSR is true because somebody tossed the I coin. I don't see. Well, that's yeah, not the case. Someone, uh, somebody I just tossed, miss, tosses the coin. Why, why is this? So why is you, this guy over? Why is this guy over talking me? Like, am I am I going to be able to respond, or are I just going to? Because you already. Me? Because I was asked for a response, and as soon as I started talking, you started. But you already. You you claimed. No, but you I lied last I, time, right? But I, I did. Okay, but, let me let me know let me know when you're done. Lightly, both of you. When you're Hold done, on. when you're done, let me know. How are you relaxed, man? Can we do this politely? Thank you. All right, Khalil, go first. Okay, so H.T. said that the whole argument comes down to the PSR, and the, the PSR, you're basically saying, doesn't have any proof. Well, it, right? Khalil, so Khalil, the whole thing the comes down to the, the PSR. The principle of sufficient reason for anybody who doesn't know the law yes, of sufficient yes. reason from Schopenhauer. Yeah, right, uh, liveness as well. So, look, um, I'm happy to accept that the contingency argument does come down to the PSR. It does. There are different forms of the PSR. We use the Avicenna PSR. There's a Leibnizian PSR, and there's some later weaker PSRs, which frankly I don't use. So that's fine. I'm happy to grant that. But I mean, let's let's take that. Let's just acknowledge that and realize that if you accept the PSR, then you would accept this argument, and therefore the only way to reject the argument is to reject the PSR. Right? Yeah. Say this is not true. Now, if you want to pay that price, you're free to pay that price. Anybody is. However, when we did talk, Mr. H.T., in the other room, and this is a time where I, I always have to go at a certain point because I have a household to help out in. Um, we had a talk. I gave arguments for why I think denying the Avicenna PSR is a contradiction. You disagreed. Um, that's fine. Part of your your uh, refutation of me was that I was being childish, or rather, my arguments were childish. Uh, and then I had to go. And then you had another conversation with with Ilias, uh, which he made a, a, other arguments to you. So that's really where it was at. Uh, to say that I didn't have any answers to you would be false. I had answers. You don't find them compelling, and that's of course you're right. What's a PSR? Are you I don't know or. What's a PSR? The uh, principle yeah. of sufficient reason. But yeah, I just want to make sure that it's done so I don't get cut off. Because I don't want him like whining when I'm He's done. Him. You can talk.
Okay, so that I didn't say your argument was childish. I said there was like a childish confusion. No, you said the argument. You confused. You confused. I don't know. I'm being cut off. You, you confused the accent. Stop the, it, please. Yes, yes. Wait, can yeah, somebody can, can somebody shut the other guy up? Thanks. So you confused the ex ante with the ex post condition, and it's like somebody confusing the thing with the coin toss rate. If I ask you prior to tossing the coin, what's the probability of heads and what's the probability of tails? They're equally probable. But once I toss and I show you that I got heads and I ask you, what's the probability of getting heads? Now we're in the ex post condition. The probability is going to be 100. But to say in the ex post case, the probability is 100. And in the ex ante state, to say it's the, the equally probable, are not, one proposition is not the negation of the other. Because in the ex post condition, it's still going to be true prior to the toss that the probability of getting heads was 0 0.5 and the probability of getting tails was 0 0.5. That's a childish mistake you made. You confuse the ex ante position with the ex post condition, right? That's why I said it's a childish mistake. Now, well, I, this I is an assume. I'm, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. Okay, keep your mouth shut until I'm done. Keep your mouth shut until I'm done. I didn't cut you off. I didn't cut you. I didn't cut you off. Okay. Pay me the same. Pay me the same respect until I'm done. Right. I told you I won't speak. I told you I won't speak until you're done. Right. Now I'm mid sentence. Don't cut me off. I'll tell you when I'm done. Okay. Good. So. The childish mistake was to confuse the ex-ante position with the ex-post condition. I'm not assuming any PSR in the coin tossing thing, right? Because what the PSR says is that every contingent thing has an explanation. Even if the, even if the one example that I give uh, has an explanation, that's not going to entail that everything that is contingent has an explanation. So that's another mistake on your part, right? Now, the PSR is understood to be a synthetic proposition by all philosophers, right? The reason is because... If you were to say that denying the PSR entails a contradiction, that's going to commit you to saying that the PSR is a theorem of logic, right? So well, what that would mean is that you could deduce the PSR from an axiom of logic, from the axioms of logic, and you'll be free to do so. So either it's the case that you're not, by contradiction or logical necessity, you mean something else other than a theorem and an axiom of logic, or it's the case that you're claiming that and you need to show us the deduction from the axioms or the theorems of logic to the PSI, right? Because, this isn't... sorry, I'm not, I'm not done. I'm so sorry, I apologize. All, all I'm interested in is an argument, right? Just give me the premises, the conclusion and the rule of inference to which the right. PSR follows. And if you want to say it's logically necessary, point out the axioms or the theorems of logic from which the PSR follows, right? That's like an easy request. Okay. Go ahead, now you can reply. No, I just want to say, I think I understood everything you said. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I just want an so, argument for the PSR okay. from the Khalil dude. This is, inductive well. this, is, this is an inductive inference argument. No, very no, well that's done. not inductive. Very well done, I'll make H. a logical argument for the PSR. Okay? Okay, okay I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write it down. One second. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh, can I, can I respond? Sufficient... Wait, wait, wait. Is that is that Khalil speaking or is it somebody else speaking? The, I mean, that, that, the, was, that was Michael. Um, but that was you, Michael. You, so, Khalil, go uh, ahead. Khalil, if you want to respond first, that's fine. I'll give my argument about the PSR after. Okay, how about Michael? Michael, you give yours, and then we'll let Khalil respond, and I'll respond to both no, of you. No, but like you, you, hold on, HP, I have the you were talking to me. First speaking rights. I mean, you guys can choose. If both of you want to give an argument, or if one of you want to give an argument, I don't really care. We will both. You, you, you spoke to me. You it's another me, way. So I yeah, but now I'm speaking to both of you, right? So it doesn't matter if I spoke to you. I'm saying the other guy's free. My goodness, are you going to let me reply? Sorry, sorry, What's it called? Uh, Zol, do you want to go first and then Khalil will go after him? Yeah, this Khalil guy needs to chill. All right, I'll, I'll be quick wrong with this guy? PSR proof. I, I apologize. You're, 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 what's wrong is you're scared. Wait, wait, I'm okay. scared of who? Wait, 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 let the Khalil guy go first because he's going to open his mouth. I already said Go ahead. Let the Khalil... Okay. Wait, wait, somebody's muting me. Let the Khalil guy go first, right? Yeah, let, so he doesn't cry. So he doesn't cry. PSR. Let the Khalil guy go first. PSR. I'm kick him a principally sufficient reason is claiming that I have enough evidence to conclude a particular thing. Logically, there are numerous possibilities. If, in my determination of the evidence, I'm able to get down to, uh, let's say, a 50-50, that it could be one thing or the other, and I determine that the evidence is slightly tilted towards one, that one is 51% more likely. At that point, logically, it would be irrational to side with the 49%.
because I have more evidence supporting the 51%. So if, for example, I had a coin that seemed to defy the 50-50 split and it seemed to show more likely than not to be heads, it would be irrational for me to assume that it was still a 50-50 split because it could be a trick coin. Principally sufficient reason is an extension of logic, simply stating that a person should follow the conclusion which is supported by the most evidence, which is true. Well, that was like at least like five things wrong with that, but I want the Khalil guy to speak. Can you state one of them? Well, for one, you use the word sh Well, for one, you appeal to something normative and logic isn't normative. The second is the PSR has nothing to do with like... What about contradictions? Is that normative? No, contradictions are not normative. They're descriptive. Okay, so then it's an inductive logic? No, it's a deductive logic. No, no, what I'm saying. Oh, no, but you just appealed to a... You appealed to a should, and you said that fa that one, one should do something. That and what was logic. the flaw in that reasoning? Oh, because logic isn't normative. So then Neither is induction. Neither induction isn't normative either. I, I don't know why you think it's normative. I, I'm simply stating that a rational person... Oh, because person you, you said it should. Should. Okay, fine. Should and odds are normative. A rational person with 51% of evidence in favor of one proposition in light of the other would only continue being logical if he sided with the 51% claim. Well, I think I think you're equivocating on the word logical there because, look... How so? As an Look, look, look. As an epistemic principle, I agree with you, right? If we're talking about epistemic justification, Great. I agree that like just take it. What, what what you ought to do epistemic. If you agree with me, I'm done. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold no, because so there's like so no, there's you agree with me. If you don't agree with Michael, me, Michael, stop it. I qualified, I qualified the agreement. I said as an epistemic principle, if we're talking epistemically, then you're gonna be epistemically justified in believing a, a proposition if it's more probable than its negation. Sure, that's just to say that it's more likely than zero point five, right? Right. Uh, given. Given given everything else you believe, right? Um, that's fine, but that's but that's not what the PSR is. What the PSR says is it's not like ep the PSR isn't an epistemic principle, right? What the PSR says is that every proposition that is true and contingent has an explanation, right? Now that's the principle we need an argument for, or the way that like the um, because they're not they're giving like a older version of the P of the uh, contingent argument that's like attributed to um, this one guy called Avicenna, this uh, Persian uh, philosopher, and there the principle is stated as um, whatever is possible or whatever is contingent has a cause, and you can understand cause there as efficient cause in the uh, the way that the Kalam says everything, whatever begins to exist has a cause in that sense, or you can understand it as a sufficient reason, the way. Leibniz presents his argument. Now, in either case, whatever interpretation they take, I'm interested in an argument. Now, that's going to be a synthetic proposition. Um, so I'm interested in an argument. But if somebody wants to say that it's an analytic pr uh, proposition, I'm just interested in the contradiction that's entailed by that proposition. And I think Khalil okay, was so offering, I, I was offering no such objection. a proof. I'm going to say that my statement stands unless someone heard within his rambling something that disproved it. Now, so... Okay, what part I of what I just said? Wait, 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 wait. What part of what I just said in your track? The part where it was a problem with anything that I said. Oh, I said because what you gave was something normative and logic isn't normative. I already corrected that. Are you forgetting? Well, you didn't correct. You said it's inductive, but inductive logic is no more normative no, than deductive logic. I said, but it's fine. Just think on wait, it. Wait, wait. So what, so what part did you say that was relevant to my reply? Of logic I said being normative? that a logical being with more evidence to support a proposition than to defeat it would be illogical if he didn't accept the evidence. Yeah, but I already addressed that, that right? Evidence. I said you're just equivocating on logical that all you mean there is like epistemically justify the rational. Yeah. Right. So you're just equivocating on the word logical. And I already said, I and I already that said, That's a and I already said, and I already said, if you're talking about some kind of an epistemic principle, then I don't disagree with you, but that's really irrelevant to a proof of the PSI. Go ahead. Ask anyone whether you should follow the principally sufficient reason or abandon the principle. Yeah, but now you're saying should. Now you're talking about something normative again. I, I don't know what your problem with normative is. I really don't. I don't. I don't have a problem, but logic isn't normative. You, you, you think that it's like some kind of an objection? No, I'm pointing out that logic isn't you normative. You did. You basically said you should say should. No, I never said that. What I'm saying is, if you're claiming that the PSR is a logical is a logical proposition, yes. what you're going to be claiming then is that it deductively follows from the axioms of logic or is an axiom of logic. 
And those deductions yeah. are not going to be enormous. Which I showed. And so there's not going to be any shoulds involved. I can't force you to see the reason as I presented it. I can no, but you didn't it. give us. You didn't present a deduction Ask from the axioms the of room, logic. If it seems that they should follow the did, principles of did anybody, reason, or but that's else. not. But that's not what I'm asking. I'm not asking should you accept the PSR or not. What I'm asking not? is for a deduction f from the axioms Why of logic to the PSR. Why are you not that question? That's my question. Oh, because because the claim that was made is that denying the PSR entails a contradiction, and that means that it's either it a, does. You're following the weaker evidence. No, but that's not a contradiction. Uh, fine, it's bad. Look. By contradiction, we mean. Look, I don't know. So don't know Michael just accepted like it. It is only true if it's deductive and normative is like irrelevant. Oh, I never said that. I'm just saying that if yeah, you claim you it's like an, debating on if you claim normative, what's wrong with I don't think, normative? It's normative. I don't think you look. If you look, if you say we ought to follow, we ought to accept the PSR. That's yes, fine, right? Sure, that's not. I'll say that. But that's not inconsistent with okay, what I'm so saying. That. No, but that's that's just irrelevant to the dialectic. Fine, I don't then. care. Accept the normative argument. Oh, but I well, I'm gonna have other issues with the argument, but I'm just okay, saying so that like even whether oh because I, oh because I don't think the PSR has any relevance to the whether or not we ought to accept what is more likely than not. That's incorrect. You have more evidence to support it. Wait, so what's the uh, evidence in 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 support of the PSR? You've got sixty percent of evidence supporting the conclusion. Wait, so what's this uh, evidence that makes PSR zero point six? I'm just giving it to you as a given. What should one do normatively? Well, I think if you have some kind of an argument that renders the conclusion 0 0.6 and the conclusion is PSR, then I think um, th then I think it will be justified to accept the conclusion. Exactly. We're on the same page. Okay. Well, that's going to apply to any conclusion, not just to PSR. All right. Can I speak? Or Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So... My claim is the denial of the PSR is a logical contradiction. Entails a logical contradiction. So what's the contradiction? Okay, the contradiction is this. So the Avicenna PSR is whatever is possible in itself can only exist dependent on another. That's the Avicenna PSR. To deny this entails a contradiction. Where's the contradiction? Well. What is possible in itself, what you call contingent, existence and non-existence are equidistant. So existence does not prevail over its non-existence and vice versa. So what is possible in itself, just in itself, cannot make itself exist. Because those two, existence and non-existence, are equally possible. To assert then that a possible in itself exists without being caused by something else is to directly contradict the very idea, the very definition of what is possible in itself. To assert that the possible in itself exists without a cause, which means existence prevailed over non-existence, okay, without any external factor, that directly contradicts the prior definition that neither existence nor non-existence prevail. So that is a contradiction. It's like saying that the possible in itself is P, and then in the same breath saying that when it exists, it's now not P, but no, there's been no difference to this entity. So that's a contradiction. Now, your response to me was by evoking uh, ex post, right, and ex ante. So can you just... For those of us who don't speak Latin, can you tell us what ex post means and what ex ante means? No, it's uh, I done because I want to like I want to have like no, a no, full I, response. No, no, I just wanted you to tell before I before I finish. Can you tell us what these terms mean? Can you just translate it into English? No, but I, but I already did. It, but I, but no, I no, did. no, no, no. What before... does ex ante mean? Tell us what it means. Oh, pri please. prior to the state of affairs obtaining and after the state of affairs obtaining. So okay. if you think in the so terms of the... Uh, no, hold, hold on. on. Hold on. No, I'm, not, I'm done. not done. You ask me to I'm explain. Easy, turn. easy. easy. Turn. But you ask me... Quiet. You ask me to define... You Eight, ask me to you define... Have to the... One second. One, one second. Wait. Khalil, Khalil, but I was asked to explain. One second. One second. One second. One second. Khalil, you asked him to explain, right? Let him explain fully and then you. And then it goes back to you, okay? Let's not do the shouting, please. 
Eight yeah, thank you. Thank you. Find, thank you. Yeah, find somebody with manners. But uh, yeah, so like if we – to just give an example because like example is going to help people, you know, who might not get like the conceptual definition to understand what I mean. So if you think about it in terms of the coin toss, right, the ex ante case prior to the state of affairs obtaining, that is throwing the coin and looking at what the result were, the probability is going to be that the heads and tails are equally probable, right? So that's going to be the ex ante prior to the state of affairs. Now, the ex ante, after throwing the coin and showing the results, let's say I showed the uh, tails as the result, that's going to be the ex post uh, state of affairs, right? So that means after the state of affairs is obtained, right? So that, that's all I meant by ex ante and ex post. And what I'm saying is that the proposition that ex ante, they're equally probable, it's still going to be true ex post. It's still going to be true that prior to me having thrown the coin, the probabilities were equally probable. But what's going to be consistent with that, it's not going to entail a contradiction, it's to say that like after I threw the coin and shown, and I was shown that what the result that obtains was tails or heads, the probability now at that point is going to be 100 rather than 0.5. That's well, well, that, 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 consistent okay. with them being equiprobable prior don't to the coin toss. Don't interrupt. Let him finish, and then I'm going to comment. Go ahead. Uh, right. So that's what's meant by ex ante and ex post. With an example provided. Now you okay, can continue. So just before now, as we continue, again, a lot of us don't know Latin. Can you just tell us what the Latin means? Well, you just, no, just did. No, no, he, he, he explained it. Just, just tr simple translation. Is that is there anyone else who didn't understand I think, what I, I meant think by ex ante and know. ex post? No, I, I understand. I don't know. Okay, so it seems like everybody else other than Khalil look, doesn't have a problem understanding I literally this. Okay. Just said I didn't understand. Okay, look, look. Okay, so. Or his lackeys. Everyone else seems no, to have understood. No, I literally just said I turn to talk now. Okay, so your example, HT, just what you just did there, right? You used this exact example of mm -hmm. ex ante and ex post. To refute the PSR. Okay? No, I didn't do that. Yeah, yes, yes. I claim that denying the PSR entails a contradiction. That was my claim. And I gave you an example. I didn't right? use them to refute the PSR. No, to refute my argument that the PSR, I, the denial of PSR. I used them to show your confusion in no, no, the PSR. You, again, it's not, the confusion is on your part because you, the, no, you are using this exam. I'm going to show you now. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to show Go you now. So. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, show, show me the uh, confusion, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I'm going to show you. And by the way, I did translate ex ante and ex post in my explanation. You just didn't listen. No, you said, said after the state of affairs. Uh -huh. and ex, it, ex, 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 ex ante, ex ante in Latin just means before the event. And ex post just means Thank after you. the event. Yes, right. very good. So is there, is there a difference between saying prior to the state of affairs and prior before the event? Okay, like I think it's a big realize, Do you realize what you just did, though? Okay. Uh, what did I, I do? Okay, so I'm claiming that what is something that's possible in itself, okay, which and by analogy the probability is 0.5, it cannot go, it cannot become a probability of one without a cause. I said yeah, if you I, deny that's this, what I'm asking an argument for. Uh, yeah, okay. that's what I'm asking an but, argument but, for. But no, no, I gave you an argument because your no, you didn't give an argument. Stop you interrupting. Just said it Stop interrupting. You just appealed to the Stop confusion of explanation. You just refuted yourself, and you're not letting me explain to you. You just refuted yourself. I'll tell That's you what. When you're you done, let me know. Me. When you're done, let me know. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. You. Okay. So, I'm going to restate what just happened. I gave, I gave an argument on why denying the PSR is a contradiction. The argument I gave was that the possible thing in itself, it its existence does not prevail over non-existence and vice versa. So it cannot exist by itself. Analogically, its, it's probability value, its existence value is 0.5 by analogy. The possible thing when it actually does exist, its existence value has changed to one because when it does exist, existence has prevailed over non-existence. Now that is a real change in the existential state of what is possible in itself. The claim being made is that if we say there's no cause to bring about this change, that is a contradiction. That's my claim. The refutation that HT provided was of ex ante and ex post in a coin toss. But the examples he's given, the reason why the ex ante probability is different from the ex post 
is because there's an actual coin toss that happened. There's an event that happened. So yeah, of course, the probability of heads or tails without the event that is in and of itself is. You cut out Dr. Khalid. To either heads, all heads, or all tails. So that is the PSR in action. I know, you cut this out. You gotta coin, go back. You gotta go back 20 seconds this... and start over. Okay, so let me start again. I said that to deny the PSR, to deny that what is possible in itself requires a cause, leads to a contradiction. The contradiction is this. The possible in itself, considered in itself, it its existence and non-existence are equally probable, equally possible. So neither prevails over the other, and it doesn't exist in itself. But then the claim being made is that the possible thing does exist by itself without a cause. But when it does exist, its existential value is now one, because existence has prevailed over non-existence. To me, that is a contradiction, because you're basically saying that for the possible thing, uh, it is simultaneously true that neither existence nor non-existence prevails, and existence prevails. That's basically a P and a not P. So that is a contradiction. Now, his response to this was to evoke the difference between ex ante probability and ex post probability, right? So the ex ante probability of a coin toss, this is before the tossing of the coin, is 50-50 of each. But then after the coin is tossed, the ex post probability, which means after the event, is one for either the head or the tail. His example that he used to refute me, he said this is not a contradiction in the case of a coin toss. It's not a contradiction because there was an actual event, a coin toss happened that intervenes or affects upon that prior probability and actualizes it to one or the other. So this example Beautiful. just proves the PSR. It doesn't refute anything I said. If you deny the Avicenna PSR, you run into a contradiction. That's why the PSR is true. Now, he doesn't have to accept that. Maybe he'll have other arguments. But my honest qu question to such people is, do you deny the PSR just when you're debating this, or do you deny the PSR and apply that denial to everything in your life? I mean, can I... Yeah, so can, can I... I wait, 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 no, 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 no. Hold, hold yeah, on, yeah, hold it's on. Can I respond? Gone. Because there's like... Yeah, so there's like a lot of problems with the reply there. First of all, I don't think... Khalil understood the uh, coin toss example. So I'm just going to address the argument as first. So there's like two ways to interpret the argument, right? Either when he says possible in itself, he means contingent. That is negating the process. Yeah, Khalil is a, a contradiction. Room, know, why, why is this guy talking? Why is this guy talking? Can somebody shut this guy up? I'm brother, talking. Brother, brother. Khalil's not in the room. Right? No, no. Assuming you want to talk to him. He's not okay, in the room. Why? So it seems like whenever this guy finishes his point, he always runs away. It's like really possible. Maybe his right? He did this the same went, thing like, that, cooked? right? So he does this like he did this like last time I was speaking to. You. Maybe I maybe his connection. No, anyway. no, people have lives. But, yeah, he's a he's a professor. Uh, okay. Can I, I okay. Maybe his connection. Yeah, so, yeah, he's babysitting kids. Like relax. Yeah. Bro. So so I'm just I'm just gonna point out the flaw in his reply, and then when he comes back, I'm just gonna repeat the same thing. So there's like a a, a number of problems. I don't. Okay. By the way, can like the mods just mute anybody who over talks to me because it's like annoying. But it's, but not, that guy, it's like, not your room, like, It's not only you speaking. There's yeah, so, uh, yeah, Michael, okay, Michael okay, Zoll. Okay, okay. So let, let, him, let him finish. Just let then, me, me thank, thank you. you. We need order, yeah. please. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, just mute any subpoena. Also, H, like, no little sarky jives is not needed either. And no I'm, not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm not. I'm telling you. That's I'm, not, I'm, no I'm not. Your voice, I'm not. Right. I'm not. Okay, so there's, like, a number of problems with that reply. Like, the first off is... When he says possible in itself, it's either that he's just building into the definition that it requires a cause. If that's the case, the problem is just going to be kicking the can further down the road because then the question is going to be, what's the argument that everything that's contingent is possible in itself? Or he just means a contingent, and then the coin toss example is going to be relevant. But the coin toss example isn't meant to be a refutation of the PSR. The coin toss example isn't even like a reply the coin toss example is just to show that what was committed was a confusion between the ex-ante and the ex-post condition. Because the proposition that ex-ante, the probability was 0 0.5, and ex-post, the probability was, was 100, is not the same proposition. 
So affirming both of them doesn't entail a contradiction. Now, in his case, he didn't actually provide an argument for the PSR. He just begged the question. He just said that, for me, it sounds like a contradiction to say that uh, existence prevails over non-existence without the cause. Now, the only way that that would be entail a contradiction would be if he built into the definition of possible in itself that it requires a cause. But if that's the case, then that's just going to be kicking the can further down the road. Because then we're just going to ask, well, what's the argument that everything that's contingent is possible in itself? And to say that everything that's contingent is possible in itself is just to give another PSR, right? Yeah, yeah, so you just move that. the position of PSR in another on. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why somebody's cutting yeah, me off. Yeah. It seems like people are kind of unable Chill to like, listen for like two minutes. Bro, come no, you speak a lot. Right. Speak yeah, so well, I'll, the other guy was speaking for like 10 minutes. I barely had like two minutes and I'm being cut off. Right, so Brother, I just, like want, I just want to make sure with the heavy breathing, but relax, man. Come on. Uh, I'm sorry, so is it Addy. is my breathing a problem no, to you? You make a good point, but I'm gonna lose track right. of it if you don't just get to the I get it. Let's get Oh no, but I did make my point, but it seems like somebody has a problem with my no, breathing. It's me. Oh well, I don't care about your breathing, but I, I, I <laughs> okay. I'm just asking you to calm down. Because because if we want to make like comments about like how if we want to make a comments about how we speak, there's a lot of substance material on the other side to just to let them amazing, know. Amazing, amazing. Uh, either way, I'm just saying to calm down, not about how you speak. Just calm down, but come on. Okay. Uh, so how is it? I'll, 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 I'll show you the contradiction. Okay. The contradiction is that uh -huh. when you deny well, the PSR, what you are saying is that non-existence can give rise to existence. For example, there is how does that follow? That is, yeah, let me show you. There is a thing that is possible in itself such that it it neither exists nor it, it does not exist right it depends upon something else to exist so or, either or way is, it, how does that happen listen can you let me finish either it way the neutral. can gets kicked uh, down the road it doesn't okay. matter no 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 it does not listen to me it is neutral it only gets kicked down to the road if you believe everything is contingent we don't believe that so when you say that a thing is contingent in itself right then the whole proposition that there is existence becomes contingent in itself, right? And now the thing is that if this proposition is contingent in itself and it could it could have been true and it could have been false, right? Then the thing is that it is not true in itself. And if it is it is not true in itself, then what is making it true? Yeah, but that's just begging the question. That's just to assume the PSR is true. Yeah. To say what's yeah. making is to say, sorry, sorry, to say what's making it true is just to assume that the PSR yeah, no, is true. Yeah, why no, couldn't it be, why couldn't it be brute? Yeah, that means non-existence is giving rise to existence. No, that doesn't mean non-existence uh, giving rise. To, for, exactly. to begin with, to say, no, 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 that, no, I think you're confused. It seems like you're equivocating something non-existing, causing something, something to begin to exist is equivalent to saying no, that no, something no, is a no. brute fact. It, then you are saying that existence can emerge out of non-existence. Is it, it is absolutely I don't know what you possible. mean. What do you mean by emerging out of non-existence? Yeah, uh, what I'm saying is it is absolutely possible for there to be non-existence and then to ex for existence to suddenly come out of it. No, but what do you mean by come out of it? See, I think you're playing a semantic trick there because no, no. there's a difference. No, no, oh, sorry. There's a difference between saying something began to exist uncaused and saying something came out of existence. So, no, some, no, sorry, I'm something came out. Came I'm not. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done speaking. I was not okay? done. I'm not done speaking. Done okay. I was not okay. Done when you're done, done when you're done, yeah, let me know. Yeah. When you're done, yeah. let me know. And then yeah, when the I speak, is, don't cut me yeah, off. Go ahead. Yeah, you start shouting. I am not saying it came out of non-existence. What I'm saying is that what you are asserting is that it is absolutely possible for there to be non-existence, right? And then suddenly for there to be existence and that sounds absolutely absurd are you are you, are you, are you done I, I, I have to i have to break yes. it from there's two people have raised their hands could you please raise your hands again because i'm, I'm not quite sure how to bring you up without yes i just want to know if this other guy is done so i can point out that, like the semantical trick is trying to play do you believe i have a simple question do you believe that from so it's not I, i'm not even saying yeah, from absolute lack of non-existence, you could get, or there could be, or the, it could happen, whatever you, word you want to use, that existence exists. I, I don't know what you mean by from non-existence could there be, because 
Either you're saying something. Sorry, I wasn't. I'm not done answering your question, dumbass. Let me finish. The fuck is wrong with you? I don't know why these people. I don't know why these people ask a question and cut you mid sentence. Like, what's wrong with you guys? Anyways, hold on. I wasn't. I wasn't done speaking. I wasn't done speaking. Sorry. I let you speak. Let me speak. Okay. Don't cut me off. If if he cuts me off, I'll ask the mod to like mute him because. It's not going to be possible if he cuts me off every two seconds, right? So there's like a problem there because I take it to say that something coming from non-existence is just going to be a gibberish term, right? Uh, ca causal relations are going to stand between objects. Non-existence is just a negation of an universal quantifier, yeah, yeah. not an object. So, so, but yeah, from, but to say but that's but that's not equivalent. So that so to say something comes from non-existence is not going to be equivalent to saying that something is a brute fact. What I'm asking for is why is every contingent proposition that is yeah. true, have, ha, has an explanation. I'm what I'm saying is that, something. what I'm saying I'm is it began, what I'm saying is that it is possible for something to begin to exist. Actually, I'm saying, I'm not even saying it's possible. I'm saying I'm agnostic because I'm not affirming, I, I don't need to affirm or negate the PSR <laughs> because the burden of proof, the burden of proof is upon the person running the contingency yeah, argument. I'm, I'm, saying, so, I'm, I'm saying not done, I'm not, I'm not, sorry, no, I wasn't no, done speaking. Scream, bro. Come on. Okay. Also, what I don't know what the Hardy about? guy. I don't know what the Hardy guy is like. Read, 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 read. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you. Wait, no, just stop and okay. Rather, No, because no, because the funny this, thing is when I was when the when when the uh, when the other guy the the other time was like crying on mic and I made fun of it. They were like all crying. I was no, like, no, you were you were literally just so like disrespecting him. So, yeah, just okay. So when I start bullying the Elias guy, don't cry. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Of course. Okay. Yes, okay. okay. Mr. Okay, no, no, no. Tr trust me, trust me. Mm -hmm. I'm not the idiot. Ooh. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show you why. Brother, brother, oh, please. Oh, we're asking you to stop okay. swearing and stop yelling and screaming. I have a simple so question. I, I'm not done answering your previous. I'm not done answering your previous question. Okay, let me have some patience. Let me answer your question. So it's if your question is if your question is. Can so, can non-existence cause existence? I'm just gonna say this no, is like gibberish because I didn't ask okay. this question exactly. You don't I'm not finished understand. speaking. No, sorry, sorry. Don't. Is there is there like a mod in here? You don't even understand what I'm you, asking. You guys are cowards. And you keep shouting. You just wait, him like wait. Why him. why do you ask him a question and interrupt him like mid sentence? You know, he, he is misphrasing. Wait, how do you know? Like he. You mean, you know? he, he Ma maybe a, just let him finish. Why do why did we put H talk? back down on the in the goo? I don't get it. Because they were getting bullied and they're cowards. That's why. And clearly, clearly. Well, I, you know, look, he doesn't. Yeah, so uh, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. So like, don't don't, don't don't worry. Question. Yeah, uh, you have a simple question, and I'm gonna answer your simple question. Okay, I know your question. Can what I'm gonna ask you previous question. Why you ask me is can there be a state of non-existence and then there be a state of existence without there being a cause? Yeah. Exactly. Right. And what and I'm saying if we and I'm saying that we need to do some interpretation of that question. If all that question is asking is there can there be brute facts, then I'm gonna say if the PSR is false, there can be brute facts. I'm just gonna be I can affirm the position of the PSR of agnosticism towards the PSR because the burden of proof is upon the person running the contingency argument to provide us an argument for the PSR, right? So whether or not I think that's possible or not is irrelevant to your burden of providing an argument for the PSR. So what's the argument for the PSR? Go ahead. The argument for the PSR is absolutely simple. There okay, what's the no simple argument? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if no ontological proposition has truth in itself, right? Then there could not, there couldn't be any truth. Simple. How oh, is that not just begging the question? How is it? Are you just saying that if if an ontological proposition, which I assume you mean that X exists? Yeah, there is no like, grounding for that right, truth. You're just wait, but yeah. by, what do you mean by ground? Hold on, what do you mean by grounding? You just mean explanation? Dude. Oh, do, do, you, do you mean the relation? Wait, do you mean the relation that the PSR asserts, like a dependency or relation? Because if that's the case, then you're just begging the question. Just when I ask you, what's the argument for the pro this this following principle that everything that's contingent has an explanation for why it's true rather than false, or why, or, or that it depends on something or whatever relation you want to assert? If your answer to that is, if it's contingent, then how could it ever obtain if it doesn't have something that explains it or it depends upon? Also, I was muted like mid sentence. So somebody who has like mod hair is like muting me mid sentence. Just to let the uh, the other guys know. 
listen, this guy doesn't understand something. He asks for an argument, and then we claim it's a priori, right? And then he says, well, it's circular. Dude, when we say something is a priori, it's always a topology. It's always a topology. Now, that doesn't second, follow. A... That doesn't follow. What about synthetic a priori? What about synthetic a priori? So, wait, one second, one second. So, wait, one what second, about one synthetic a so, well, Answer the question. What about no, 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 synthetic a priori? It's either analytic. One second. It's, only, it's either analytic or it's not It's not a priori at all. Wait, what about synthetic a priori? It's One second. So, so one second. If we speak about synthetic a priori, for example, um, let me let me give you an example, right? No, I wanted to answer. It's synthetic. No, no, wait, wait, one, one you second. just said no. You one just second. said that if it's a priori, it's analytic. What about synthetic? A priori? Yeah, it's are it's, 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 it's accepted. Are you an empiricist? Oh, wait, one second, one second. One, oh, oh, so there. Oh, so, so, oh, so a priori accept, doesn't accept, entail. Accept, oh, so it's not tautological then. Oh, so it's not tautological then. So you change your claim. Work of you. One second. Wait. One second. You're presupposing something. One second. For me, as in human, for as for me as in human, right? When something is a priori, oh, oh, it means something uh -huh. is accepted on burden of a contradiction. It's not ex accepted on experience and um, probabilistic assessment. Yeah, that's just the definition of a priori. What about when synthetic we, a priori? When we, speak about, when we speak about something that's accepted on burden of a contradiction, for example, mm -hmm. A is not false A. This is a tautology. This is not something that is proven by an external, um, by an external proposition. So... If you want to, ex if, if if you want to, if you want him to justify the PSR, and you're saying what he's saying is 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 is, is, is a tautology, sure, but that's what we mean by a priori. Wait, oh, wait but I think you can. Well, I think. I could oh, hold on, I don't know. I don't know why somebody's. Got, so you didn't answer my question, right? Because I want to understand if you're like an empiricist or not, right? If you're like a logical positivist or some form of empiricist, because. One way to demarcate the distinction between empiricists and rationalists is, pro is precisely if synthetic a priori is possible. So I just want to know if you think that synthetic a priori is possible. Because if you don't think synthetic a priori is possible, then you're just committed to the position that you can't ever accept the PSR and be rational. Because that means because the PSR is synthetic. So that just means that you can't have any a priori ground for the PSR. So if you can't have any grounds for the PSR, and by grounds here I just mean like an inferential argument, it has to be an inductive argument. And then appeal to a priori is just going to be irrelevant. Wait, what? No, I want to. Uh, I'm talking to the Apon guy. Yeah, oh, so Apon yeah. guy. So the first question I asked you, right, is synthetic a priori possible? I just want a yes or no. Sure. Okay, yeah, so this... if it's a yes or no, then 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 you're then you're just contradicting yourself because when you came in here like all guns and heavy, what you said is that it, when once we say something is a priori, we're saying something is tautological, right? But that's just say it's analytic. But now you're saying that something can be a priori without being tautological. So now you're contradicting yourself. So what, which is it? Were no, you no, correct no, no, the first time or the second no, time? Wait, 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 you're, you're presupposing the Kantian view of, of synthetic I'm not presupposing priori. anything. I'm asking no, no, you a question. No, 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 no. no. I'm asking you a question. I'm not one presupposing second. anything. One second, one second, one second. All right, let me mute this guy. This guy comes, comes in with his Kantian perception of, of a I'm priori. Not a Kant, I'm not a Kantian. For me, for me. Oh my for God. me, one second. For me, I accept the human for for me, analytic truths always a priori. And we speak about things that are not tautological and are not are not How is this relevant accepting to burden of contradiction. Yourself? One second, are not accepting another burden of contradiction. Sure, these these are obviously probable these are always a probabilistic assessment and these wouldn't um, be used for just to justify the PSR rate. So when we used to when we try to justify the PSR, right? As claimed by A, D, S, and C, to, would lead to a contradiction if, if negated. Then these things are accepted, right? Not because of an external problem. That's not what, I, that's not what a priori means, by the way. But so there's like you're making a lot of mistakes. But the first thing I pointed out is you contradicted yourself, and you haven't addressed that, right? Because when you came in, you said if we say something is a priori, we're saying it's tautological. But then I asked you, what about mm -hmm. synthetic a priori? And by the way, and by the way, I just want to be clear. I'm not a Kantian. Actually, I'm an empiricist. I don't believe there's synthetic a priori. Right? I believe anything that's. I believe that anything that's a priori is going to be analytic. I was just asking you, right, if you hold that view or not. Because if you hold that view, then you're just going to hold the position that there can't be any argument that is a priori for the PSR because the PSR is a synthetic proposition. That's why I was asking you. I wasn't asking you because I'm some kind of a Kantian. In fact, I am anti-Kantian. Right? I'm an empiricist. So. That's like, I'm just giving you my, like, my background. But 
the point that I was making now is that you contradicted yourself because initially you came in and you said when something is a priori, it's ethological. But then when I asked you, what about synthetic a priori, you said you accept synthetic a priori. So you've contradicted yourself. So now I just want to be clear. Do you I, do you think that if something is a priori, it's ethological, or do you open the, the, the space for there being like non-tautological a priori? One second, one second. Okay. I just said I reject the Kantian, right? view on, on, on a priori truths. I accept the Yumi and for it, right? So for me, analytic truths always are a priori and they're tautological, right? But when it comes to yeah, but that's um, compatible right, the with probabilistic the assessment, one second, if it comes to probabilistic assessment, right, these, obviously, these wouldn't be used for justified PSR. For me, right, I believe that a priori is always tautological and always analytic. So when yeah, it comes to PSR... but now you're PSR, contradicting yourself and again, because you just agree that there are synthetic a priori. I don't agree with that. Oh, so so you take back that there are synthetic a priori. So you're like an empiricist. You well, one, second, one, second. I, one second, I always said, one second, I always said that for me, as you mean, right, a priority is always tautological and analytic. Wait, but I asked you, is there synthetic a priori? And you said yes. So now I assume the answer is no, there are no synthetic a priori. I don't accept it. No, wait one second, one second. When it comes okay, to... okay. So now, so now in agreement. Okay, fine. So you take back the statement. There is no synthetic. You priori. ask okay. whether it is. Is there the PSR? Synthetic hold truth, on, right? hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. I didn't ask you if there's synthetic truths. Obviously, there are synthetic truths, right? They're going to just be a posteriori, not a priori. What I asked you specifically, what about synthetic a priori, right? And you said there is synthetic a priori. But I assume you maybe I'm appealing to the principle of charity here. I'm going to be charitable to you. Maybe you misheard me or something. Maybe you interpreted me as just asking you, are there synthetic truths, right? So now me and you are both empiricists, or the term you're using, humans, right? Yeah, I'm a um, human. Now, now, now you agree that if something is a priori justified, that's just going to entail that it's analytic, right? Yeah, there's even an analytic truth. Right. Or, so, for example, no, that's not what I'm asking. No, 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 no. It, that's it, not it, what it, I'm it, asking it, you. It Listen either. to the question. Listen to the question. If something is a priori, then it is analytic. Yeah, I agree. Is that? The, I just okay. said the Perfect. Uh, for, Perfect. Now, second, is the PSR? Is the PSR, is the PSR? Is the PSR analytic or synthetic? It is analytic. Okay, so you just said that the PSR is analytic. Now, the f give me your understanding of what analytical means and give me your understanding of what the PSR is. One well, analytic is that which is accepted on burden of a contradiction. No, no, no. No, I'm asking, yeah. what's the definition of analytic? I just gave you the, the you mean definition of... Wait, so by analytic, do you mean it's true by definition or it's reducible to a theorem or an axiom of logic? Or what do you mean? It's accepted by I definition. Also, oh, accepted by definition. So, see, accepted by definition is going to have a range of meanings. But do you just mean it's a definition? Because definitions are just going to be instances of the live identity. Right? Yeah. So, like I said, for example, when we speak of P is not false. P is not the truth. It's accepted number of contradictions. Since <coughs> if P is defined as P, then obviously negation of it would be. If if it, if the if the statement is true, then obviously negation of it would be. Uh, Logical contradiction if also Wait, but, No, but listen to my question, right? Because I don't think you're tracking the question. So when you say by definition, you understand that definitions are just instances of the law of identity, right? For example, if I say bachelors are unmarried men, if I was to shift syn synonyms with synonyms, I would get bachelors are bachelors. And but that's reducible to A is A. And this is going to be an instance of the law of identity, which is that for every A it's going to be identical to A. Now, that's not going to be a principle, because the PSR is supposed to be a principle. The PSR is supposed to be something like, for all, for all propositions, if the if the t predicate, if the proposition has a t predicate, then the proposition has an explanation. Now, that's not an identity relation, so it can't be a definition, right? So the definition, so it's not going to be true by definition. So what's so what's the other candidate for uh, the PSR being analytic? Well, one second, one second. The reason why we say it's analytic, right? And why I don't know how you say we. Like if, anybody well, who we, know anybody who's familiar with the PSR knows it's synthetic. No, one second, one second. So why we say it's analytic is that the <clears throat> it's accepted on burden of a contradiction in the sense that if the negation is true, right, that the PSR is not true, then the it will lead to a, to a logical contradiction in terms. Since you say that something is, since you yeah, say that the P is, one second, mm -hmm. one second, 
So I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Spinoza's argument for APSR, which is an analytic argument. Well, I don't take Spinoza's argument to be an analytic argument. What I take it to be is that he is postulating certain premises which are going to give rise to the PSR. Um, actually, I don't even remember if he just postulates the PSR or if he actually gives an argument for PSR. I, I, I read like the ethics like 15 years ago or something. But, but regardless, um, the, 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 the PSR or any causal principle are going to be synthetic rather than, P, uh, rather than analytic because they're not true by virtue of meaning. Right, that is why, if you read Kant, right, um, Kant, Kant proposed like a transcendental argument for the for the categories. One of them being something akin to the PSR, right? But that was supposed to be a synthetic a priori. If you read Craig as well, Craig states precisely that it is an appeal to a metaphysical intuition by which the causal principle is true, but it is nevertheless not true by definition, right? So if you like read Western analytic philosophy, it's like It'll be like you'll be like laughed at if you claim this principle is analytic because if you say it's analytic, what you're saying is it's either tr it's either true by virtue of meaning, or it's merely a theorem or an axiom of logic. But you're not going to be able to show me how it's an axiom or theorem of logic, and you're not going to be show me how it's true by the virtue of definition. Now, if you want to say that negating the PSR is going to entail a contradiction, go ahead and show me which contradiction, which which is the proposition we're going to be affirming and negating by denying the PSR. Okay. Couldn't, couldn't he just say sorry? Can I... couldn't, couldn't he just say that um, d denying the PSR? Uh, this is not my position, but I'm just saying. He, can he just say that denying the PSR entails contradiction? Like, yeah, but let's just say that it's a theorem or an axiom of logic. Uh, yeah. So, 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 but what's so the? If he yeah, says, but... so, so if if, the, if his position is that um, based on certain you know uh, uh, premises, right? we come to the conclusion that a denial of the PSR leads us to uh, a, a certain contradiction. Maybe it's that what what what, what Dr. Khalil was talking about. But something no, 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 my friend, you're confused now. See, there's a difference between saying the PSR in conjunction with other premises entails a contradiction and saying that denying the PSR entails a contradiction. When you say that the PSR is analytic, you're saying that negating the PSR only of itself is going to entail a contradiction. Not that PSI and other given other premises is going to give us a contradiction. Yeah, I'm because not, once I'm you not, include I'm other, not, not because yeah, once yeah. you include, sorry, once you include other premises, you're just saying that the PSI, in conjunction with these other premises, uh, give us an inconsistent set, and that set entails a contradiction. Yes, yeah, so that's not to say that, the, but that doesn't necessarily mean the PSI is analytic. Yeah, yeah. But he's claiming yeah, okay. analyticity of the PSI. Okay, okay, but then. Uh, Okay, so so it would be more of like a metaphysical necessity, right? No, 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 no. But then it wouldn't be analytic because that I wouldn't know, even I know, work. I know, no, no, I get that. Right, but no, 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 no. My friends, listen, we're going by what he said. He said it's analytic. Right? Yeah, so I'm going to hold him. I'm no, no, no. I'm being. Well, listen, what, what you you're not being charitable because what you're what because by your interpretation you're interpreting him as not knowing what the word analytic means. Right. Uh, and he's not only used the word analytic, he's also said by definition. Right. So you're, like you're, the chair... familiar, you're familiar with Islamic philosophy somewhat, right? No, it doesn't look it doesn't matter because I'm, the analytic look You're using the words differently. You should be Yeah, but charitable. you're still no but no 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 yeah. because by your inter look, I don't mind I don't mind look, I don't mind being charitable as much as you want, but I'm just saying that by your interpretation, because he said analytic and said by definition. That means that by your interpretation, he's going to be ignorant of both words. What it but means for something you, to be true bro, by bro, definition. Bro, 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 no, but that. To, look, he yeah, but, but even if he, even if he, no, no, wait, listen, listen. Even if he, even if he did. What was the first definition he gave you? What was the first definition he, he gave he you? He said it's after? negation entails a contradiction, but metaphysical necessities, negating them doesn't entail a contradiction. Yeah. No, but, I, I okay, said it's, look, it's logically contradictory. No, we're not no, talking no, about no, you no, now. No, Listen. No, it's upon yeah, the, yeah, we're not talking about you. We're talking about the upon guy. Yeah. We, we, we're talking about upon. He said negating it implies a contradiction. Now, yeah, but that, that's that but that's not metaphysical. Things. No, no, no. It can't. No, it can't. What he's saying is, if you take this proposition to be false, like bachelors are unmarried men, but that by itself is going to entail a P and not P. Okay, so so okay, so water is H two O. Does negate? No, that's it. No, 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 no. Because water, no, water is H two O. Is a synthetic identity. It's not an analytic yeah. identity. Okay, fine, fine. But does negating it entail a contradiction? 
No, it's a synthetic proposition. But he said okay. precisely it's an analytic proposition. Okay, okay. But, but you are aware that some philosophers say that these metaphysical modalities, they just collapse into, collapse into logical modalities. I've been, you no, who, 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 who? Swinburne is one of them. For Swinburne example. doesn't hold that view. Where does Swinburne say yes, synthetic? Does. No. Where, does, where does Swinburne say synthetic collapses to analytic? Give me I, the, didn't give me... he says, I didn't say he says synthetic collapses to analytic. What I said is that he says that metaphysical modality collapses to logical modality yeah but that's and, irrelevant and but that's irrelevant. Irrelevant. look it's, no it's a, here's why it's here's why it's irrelevant right because when you say h2o is identical to water the identity there is relevant is that identity supposed to be synthetic or is it supposed to be a priori right because we can look we can reject that there's such thing as even modality but nevertheless commit ourselves to analyticity and synthetic propositions Right, and we can still and we can still demarcate the synthetic from the analytic identities, right? Yes, the point so is saying, that no, 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 no. The point is that look, you... somebody can say, look, I understand your claim. Somebody can say, look, if you analyze what is what what are the paradigm cases of metaphysical uh, necessities, right? And the typical the paradigm case is going to be the following one: something can't be green all over and blue all over, right? What he says is these these collapses to analytical modalities. What what he means is that there is like successful analyses of these propositions that renders them as logical contradictions. And Putnam, Hilary Putnam, if you know who that is, has a paper showing that the paradigm cases of synthetic a priori or metaphysical necessities, as you call them, can be can be shown to merely be um, analytical propositions. But that is different to say. But that is different to say that H two O is identical to water, is reducible to an analytical truth, because that is supposed to be a synthetic identity. What that means is that you can only discover that water is H two O by going out into the world and yeah, carrying out not experiments. Saying, I'm not saying it collapses into an analytic truth. Yeah. I am saying that a, a a synthetic proposition, the denial of a synthetic proposition, proposition can lead to a contradiction oh but now you yeah now you're just now you're just confused because when swinburne says when swinburne says these collapses into the, those others what he's saying is that these propositions you thought were synthetic turns out to be analytic he's not saying that synthetic propositions collapse into analytic propositions now h2o is identical to water to me, bro you're not listening Wait, hold to on, me. i'm hold not on. saying it collapses into an analytic proposition what i'm okay. saying is taking upon his words charitably right he can be referring to something similar to what I was just saying right now about H two H two O being identical to water and the denial of it implying a contradiction. You can apply the same thing to his understanding of possibilities and necessities as they, as they relate to the PSR and as per Dr. Khalil's explanation to try to understand what he means by you know the PSR being a logical necessity. Oh, I just disagree that that's a charitable interpretation, because by your interpretation, a pawn doesn't know what contingent means, given the lit in the literature, he doesn't know what necessity means, he doesn't know what contradiction it, means. Bro, listen, he I told know. you he's using it from... We have different definitions of these. No, no, but these, hold, 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 no, 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 listen, no, no, because it can't be the case that he's using different definitions, because he's specified by analytic, he means true by definition. So he's appealing to a semantical understanding of analytic. I, I told you, but but he he said by analytic he means look it's look look denial implies a contradiction. And, and then I ask, and then and he also, he also you, said he also said that you don't like did relax, he say relax, listen, bro, relax, listen, listen, did he listen, say relax, you did he you say it's true by definition? Are you off, bro, please. Let me why is that? Why is that hard? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll let you finish the sentence, but then you're gonna answer my question. Okay. Okay, I'll answer your question. So so look. Uh, what what I'm saying is that when he says that it's a denial implies a contradiction or it can lead to a contradiction, however he puts it, interpreting that charitably, interpreting that charitably, you can take it the way I just took it without trying to, you know, put him in a box and pin him down on the terminology. You can do that. Okay, done. Especially, mm -hmm. especially when you know, when you do understand that he's coming from like more of a uh, traditional Islamic philosophy background, and these terms are used differently. Okay, done now? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so the first thing, so there's like a set of problems here. The first one is, when I ask, he defines specifically analyticity in terms of true by definition, which is exactly how it's understood in analytic philosophy. 
right? That is that if you shift synonyms with synonyms, you'll get an instance of the live identity, right? The second thing is analyticity, synthetic, contingency, necessity, right? These categories are going to be Western categories. They're not going to be like Eastern categories, right? Like if you appeal to like Eastern categories, you're going to get something like Darura and other things. Now, Darura could be translated as necessity, right? But like the categories of like analyticity, synthetic, true by definitions, these linguistic categories are not available to the Western reader. The second thing is that even negating it entails a contradiction. That's going to be understood analy analytically, right? Because it's not saying that negating this in conjunction with other things that are plausible or intuitive yeah, yeah. or we can grant or something. It just said that negating this one proposition entails a contradiction. So when you're, when you're by your interpret, I think my interpretation of him as just merely being ignorant of the terms he's using and just having made the mistake is more charitable because what you're saying is that he's completely clueless and has no idea what any of these terms mean. No, no, I don't mean And when that, he says, and that. on top of, and on top of that, he Why specified. Shouting, man? Chill. No, no, Alex, I'm not shouting. No, I, Trust I me, I'm just. HT, this, is, this is how you run away from oh, arguments. No, 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 you I'm not. Khalil, why is this, is this guy? Mean, I'm replying. I'm mean, replying. I'm mean, replying to the guy. I don't want to call out your duplicity in these rooms. Okay, it's very important that people know what you're doing when you don't have an argument. All you try to do you is trap shouting. people in. Yeah, I don't know why I was. I don't know why I don't know why I was kicked you out. Just try to, you just Look tried eight, to, to create eight, a cobweb. Yeah. Of yeah. So Abdurrahman, by the way, and, the other guys kicked me out. I'm trying. You're not. You're not. Uh, yeah. You're not I was fair. And when you say that, oh, we have to use Western categories. Yeah, Khalil, Khalil, I never said you have to do anything. You, yeah, Khalil, you I'll get. Yeah, you did. Yes, Khalil, you did. I'll get to you. We have to use Western. I never. Uh, now you're. Now you're lying. Okay. Khalil, 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 I'll get. Khalil, Western you're lying now, and I'll get to you yeah. in a second. Yeah, yeah, Khalil, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be quiet Khalil, let me Khalil, no, you're lying no, now. No, you cut me off. You cut me off. You cut me off. I wasn't done. You cut me off. You cut me off. Quiet, you guys are abusing your mods. You guys are abusing your mods. You, you guys are abusing your mods. You're afraid of letting me speak. I'm gonna look, look Khalil. I'm again, gonna look, again. Khalil. We'll go one on one. Look, Khalil. We'll go in one on one, and I'll abuse you. Don't worry. What, like, what, let me just finish with other. Khalil. Khalil, you ran away. Khalil, you ran away. Khalil, Khalil, you ran away. You ran away twice. You ran away twice. Khalil, you ran away twice. I didn't repeat it. I didn't. Now you're lying. Brother, we can have now a you're lying. Yalla, who's, who's, the, who's the bigger guy? Who's the bigger, 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 bigger Look, minute, look, minute, I was minute. talking to Abdul Rahman. I was interrupted. Right? Let me finish with Abdul Rahman. Khalil, I'll get to you one on one. We'll talk as much as you want. Just don't run away. We'll talk all night, right? And I'll embarrass you in front of your friends. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah. Let, <laughs> me see, let, me see, don't, let me talk let me to Abdul Rahman. Let me talk to Abdul Rahman. No, no, look, look, look. Khalil, I'm saying this. Khalil. Khalil. Screaming at guys, guys, guys. I'm not. I'm not. You're talking to Abdul Rahman. So it's me. Abdul Rahman. Look, 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 look. I, no, Abdul Rahman, you haven't allowed me. Listen, you haven't allowed listen. me to reply to you, right? Because they yeah, they cut me look, off. Look, let me say something. Let me say something. Okay, I, go ahead. I, look, I I I am in agreement with you on some points. All no, but, but no, no, no. But we're disagreeing me. how to interpret upon. Look, I don't care I, if you're agreement. I'm trying. I am trying to look past some of the stuff he's saying that I. But that's that no. But look, not... look, look. I'm just. I want to ask you a question, and you didn't no, allow me. Don't want to be charitable. Look, okay, so so when he says, okay, Abdurrahman, I'm going to ask you a question. When he says, I'm a human, I'm a human, what does that mean? When he says he's a human, what does that mean? How do you try to interpret that? It, 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 means, it means that he's an empiricist, basically. Right, and, and, when, and, and what does it mean for him to be an empiricist? Go ahead. It means that a priori truth must be analytic. Thank but, you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And what does that mean? And under the human understanding, remember, he's, a, he's using a Western term, human, right? He's, he's appealing to specifically the philosophy that comes out of David Hume. When he says, I'm an empiricist by the human understanding, what, how, how, how does that, how, under that framework, how is analyticity understood? Yeah, but, okay, I, I rather, rather than, because I understand. I just want, to, I just want to, an answer to my I, question, I please. Just answer my question. I, I understand it the way. No, no, don't understand it. Just answer the question. Yeah, it's denial entails a contradiction. I, I get that. Okay, and, and what, okay, so when something, then it's denial entails a contradiction. Is that going to be a theorem or an axiom of logic or not? Yeah, it's going to be an axiom Okay, thank you. So when well, I interpret well, listen, him as saying, so when I interpret him as saying that the PSR is analytic, as either saying that it's, 
it's definitionally true or it's reducible to a theorem or an axiom of logic. How am I being uncharitable? When he specifically used the word human, definition, and analyticity. Go ahead. Okay, now, 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 can I, now can, I, can I answer you? Yeah, because yeah. Because I agreed with you on many points. So look, what, what, all, all I'm coming in and saying here is that he's using these terms in a certain way. From, 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 from your perspective and from mine, it might, be, it might not be that accurate in terms of the way he defined <laughs> the terms, but then he means something specific when he says that it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, an, an, uh, an analytically true. And when he says that it implies a contradiction, he has his, in his mind something that's not very difficult to understand. If you understand so when he says, so when he stuff. says he's a... Anyway, let's, I don't know why I'm being muted. So, Abdurrahman, no, no, no. when he says he's a human, and then he says analyticity, he's not understanding analyticity the way humans understand yeah, it? Yeah, obviously. Maybe he's making it wrong. I don't know. The okay, so is, upon, upon, yeah. upon, wait, 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 upon, let's just ask him directly, right? So, yeah, upon, sure. is it listen, true, listen, listen. is it, it true explain, that, explain. hold on, hold on, let me ask you the question, let me ask you the question first and you can speak, right? Is it true that the way these people are interpreting you, you're completely ignorant of what human analyticity and by true by definition means in the Western analytic canon? Listen, or is it the case that you meant exactly that? Go ahead, just listen, answer this listen. question and then you can speak. Listen, I just said I accept the human for for me when it comes to relation of ideas is that which is mm -hmm. which follows by relation by 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 which is true on ad absurdum, right? When it comes to matters of fact, right, these are the propositions which negation would not entail a logical contradiction. When it comes to the PSR, it's accepted on burden of a contradiction. It's a relation of ideas, so it's analytic for the human. Okay, so when you say it's relation about. of ideas, what do you mean? So that's you which, mean analytic? Which, which is true on ad absurdum, yeah, analytic for the human. Right, so you mean that I don't, I don't, I don't think you're so you mean it's the true. Fork, then. I'm sorry, what? The Hermian fork makes a difference between matters of facts and relations of ideas. When we speak about relations of ideas, these are the analytic truths, right? Which are accepted on burden of a contradiction. The other ideas, which are no, but, matters of no, facts. No, but human, no, but if you read Matters human, of right? facts, matters of Look. facts, these are, these are the propositions which negation would not into a logical contradiction. When we speak about EPSR, since it's um, <coughs> since if, if the PSR is not accepted, it would entail a logical contradiction. It would be analytic for a new mean. No, no, look, look, look. I think you're kind of confused now because let's just go back to Hume, right? So Hume had a distinction between what? Between relations of ideas and matters of fact, right? Yeah. Now, when Hume says relations of ideas and matter of fact, does he mean something different than what Kant meant by analytic and synthetic? Yeah, when 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 Kant, for example, speak about synthetic truths, right? Is there, this wouldn't be included in any prior truths of, uh, of? No, him. but no, but now now you're kind of confused, right? Because they can have a dispute whether or not um, this thing can be a prior justified or not. What I'm just asking is, did they understand analytic and synthetic the same way, and they just disputed whether one can be a prior or not, or did they mean completely different things by? Um, relations of ideas and analytic and matters of fact and synthetic. Well, for Kant, when it comes to synthetic truths, it depends on where some of the ontological statements of the, um, for, for example, like when we speak about um, an alien, right? What an alien is can be true or not depends on the ontological, or I mean, not necessarily in the definition, but also on the, uh, what is ontologically possible right so it would be synthetic right, for Kant. how did i tell you what how did he and personally define relations of ideas yeah that, that which is true or not at, at absurd uh, on, on no, 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 but, contradiction no no that's not the definition he gives no, no, i'm that's, asking that's, what that's Hume, whole, wait that's how relations of ideas i'll, I'll tell you i'm asking you how Hume. 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 i'm asking you no i agree that like denying something that's a relation of ideas and tears of yeah, contradiction you're, I'm asking, you're reinterpret wait, my interpretation of Hume is that when it comes to Hume being for it why are speaking we arguing it. about definitions Can why is this guy why is this guy screaming no no shh don't get don't interrupt yeah, me and my pod get out of here okay. relax man if you shout, you 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 will stay there. I, I, I'd, li I'd, li I'd like I'd like Elias I'd like HT to come back up so we can ask. Yeah, him last about time, what, what, last what, what, yeah I, don't, I know why I'm getting time. kicked. Look upon upon look I'm talking to you upon. Is, I don't know why anybody else is getting in, is, involved. The thing is, no, the thing listen. Is last time, last time. Listen, Elias, last.
last time you ran away when I proved to you that you... even without PSR, what, even when... without PSR. Wait, when I did can... I run away to you? Even without the PSR, I can prove to you. When did I run away? Of an indiv- even without the PSR, I can prove when to you. When did I run away? Of, even without the PSR, I can prove prove to you the when existence did I run of away? an when? even without the PSR, I can prove to you the existence when of an did I run away? existence. Even when? without the PSR, I can prove to you the existence of an independent when, existence. When did I run away? Even without the even without the PSR, I can prove to you Why, the you existence the of question? an independent even when? without the PSR, I can prove to you the existence of an when independent When did I run existence. away? When did I run away? Even without the PSR, I can prove to you listen. the existence of an independent listen, existence. Listen, listen. Even without the PSR, I can bro, prove to bro, you why, the existence of an independent why is he, existence. Why? Notice how he's afraid. He keeps muting me. No, you He keeps afraid. muting me. If, he keeps muting me. Afraid. When did I run away? When if, if Okay, if you're not afraid, then engage with the I was kicked out from your... Uh, don't lie, I was ki- you kicked me out. I didn't run away, you kicked no, I, me out. I, I, you I, ran away, you I, ran away. I, I was kicked out, I didn't run away, you ran away. I, I did not okay. kick you out. I was, someone else kicked me out. In the call, someone else kicked me out. I didn't run away. Okay. Why are you lying? Okay. Why okay. are you lying and saying I was kicked away, out? Right? You claimed you ran away, wait, see, back that wait. up. Back that okay. up. Wait, back I was kicked out, I was kicked out. Are you scared to back it up? You said you ran away, are you scared to back it up? I was kicked out by someone oh, yeah, else. Okay, on this okay, point. No, no, no. But argument. you said he ran away. You said he ran away. Are you scared to back that up? Yes or no? Either, either he ran away oh, or someone scared, else was afraid on his point. Either he ran away or somebody else was kicked out. HT, and I'm, quali- HT, I'm qualifying. I'm qualifying. No, I've, back it up, I've qualified my claim HT, now. You made a specific okay, okay. claim, and, and I've qualified my claim. Run away. And I'm Did saying qualify- here we're not going anywhere. Okay. You said HD, right? HD. You said he ran away. Prove Did it. I qualify it? Did I qualify it? Okay. Brother, you claimed it. Okay, then Did I qualify it? Qualify the claim. Did I qualify okay. it? I qualified okay. either he ran away or someone no, else or someone else. I was afraid on his it. part and kicked me out. Originally, you claimed it. Uh, and you then I qualified. Now, now you're and I qualified what I meant, okay? okay. Did I qualify okay, what now. I meant? Thank you. So you retracted, right? No, I didn't retract it. <laughs> You retracted, of course. No, what I didn't. I qualified. Okay. I qualified what I meant. Take it back. Hadi, Hadi, no, I didn't take it back. That's okay. Let's... You want to get to okay. the argumentation now? Yes, Wait, yes, so yes, now, yes, notice yes, how yes, Hadi yes, tried to push no, me on no, this no, and no, now no, it's no, running no, away. Uh, no, what no, I said, no, hold on, hold on. I'm talking to, I'm talking to, I'm talking to a pawn. I was talking to a pawn. These people are, these people are trying to save a pawn. Here. We're not dealing with ridiculous yelling behavior. We're These people know that a pawn fucked up. One minute, brother. These people are trying to save a pawn. These people are trying to save a pawn. Bro, what are you They're... talking about? The thing is, I have an argument. Can this person, HT, can he refute it or not? Can okay, let's go. Let's go one on one. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. When you're done, you tell me you're done. When I'm done, I'll tell you when I'm done. Nobody kicks nobody. Okay. Okay. But but Elias, okay, Elias before you start, before you start, Elias, please. Because look, um uh, l- let me tell you something, but I mean you see this 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 style of just sitting back and analyzing arguments and just you know, kicking premises out the window just because you feel like it is it's not you know, it's something that some people like because it's easy to do. But I, I I just don't find it useful. I mean, why doesn't H T here tell us what he accepts as a principle of explanation? Why doesn't he tell us whether he accepts whether it's reasonable? No, I can answer. I can answer you. I can answer you. Right? Is it dependent on whether I accept or not whether the contingency argument is sound or not? I'm not talking about the contingency argument right now. Oh, okay. The dispute is the contingency argument. But but one second, one second. Right now, right now, the specific Uh dispute that's been going on for quite a while is about the principle of sufficient reason. So what's the what's the difference between that's a PSR, dumbass? The PSR is the principle of sufficient reason. Why are you insulting? Why are you calling me insulting? Why are you calling me insulting? Yeah. Why are you calling me insulting? Whenever, are whenever, you drunk? When, whenever okay. this person will abuse, I will kick him down and then I'll bring him back so we can highlight why he is abusing, right? Now you can come back. Yeah, uh, with the PSR. Yeah, so when somebody says the P, when, when I ask somebody, look, when somebody says the contingency argument is sound 
And the premise in dispute is the PSR. But wait, wait, are you right. going to apologize? You just called me a dumbass and I wasn't rude to you at all. So. Wait, but but I think but I think you're but no, but I but can I argue uh, for why? Are you going to apologize? So but what if I can give an argument for why you're a dumbass? Okay. No, but wait, wait, wait. Uh, so so you're not going to apologize. I mean, I want to have a respectful discussion. Yeah, whenever with you. he'll abuse, I will kick him down. Okay. Okay, I don't know why. I don't know why. Look, look the to the, the joke you guy. Do you want to go one on one or not? No, we're not doing a one on one. Look, HT, HT. I don't know if you're drunk. I don't know if you're drunk or what. But I'm trying to have a calm discussion with you. What what you're? Oh, but but your friends won't allow that though man. because they kicked me man. down. Hey, you you look, won't allow it either. You called the me thing is, you called me Look, the thing is, look, the man, the thing is, I yeah. presented him an argument even without the PSR. I don't even. You didn't give me an argument. I didn't yeah, give you an argument. But, but, but Ilyas, 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 okay, Ilyas. okay. So give me. Ilyas, some people wait, did you, did you just like wait, wait, wait? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Abdul Rahman, Abdul Rahman. Did he? Ht, are you gonna apologize for calling him? No, no, no. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not. 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 Are you gonna run away now? I'm not. Are you gonna run away? We're all very scared. We're all very scared. Okay. So am I gonna? Very scared. Okay. Are you gonna let me go? Are you gonna let me go one on one with Elias? Or not? I'm not gonna. Look. One on one with Elias. Like, what is this? You wanna? You drink or something? Honestly. Elias. Elias. Just lied. Look, Elias. Last time, Elias. Yeah, 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 yeah. Abdul Rahman is talking to you. I'm talking to you now. Hold, hold. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm the other guy you, asked me a question. Okay. No, but, no me. let me talk to you. I'm, I've okay. Asked you a question. Can I respond to him and, and, when he's look, done? Can I respond to him when he's done? Look, look. You let them all answer. Let them all answer. Can I respond to him when he's done? Can I respond to him? Can I respond to him? Can I respond to him? Just listen to Abdul Rahman. He's saying something. Can I respond to him when he's done? I just answered your question. Can I respond to him? Yes or no? I just answered your question. Is it a yes or is it a no? I just said, listen to Abdul Rahman. That's it. Can I respond to him? Yes or no? <laughs> okay, you want you? I literally just answered your question. What else? Do you saying want? Is, saying yeah, listen yeah. to him is not answering my question. What he wants, Hadi, please just say yes. Just say yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, you can respond. Yes. To okay, him. go you ahead. Yeah. Okay, look. So you right now, what you guys have been discussing is a principle of sufficient reason, right? Basically, a principle of explanation, right? What things require explanation? What things don't require explanation? What's the nature of explanation? All these questions are relevant and they are related. Now, I assume that. Everybody has a general understanding of what explanation is, and everybody has a general framework for how to apply a certain principle of explanation or a certain understanding, even if it's an intuitive one. So right now, um, uh, I, I don't think it, there needs to, like the denial of any particular PSR needs to entail some kind of contradiction. I'm asking you whether you think it is reasonable to hold to the idea that contingent things have explanations, even if it isn't a like universal or like like ontological claim that's just necessarily ontologically committing, even if it's from an epistemic perspective, do you think it is reasonable to hold to the principle that contingent things have explanations? Okay, done. Yes, uh, yeah. Can I respond now? Yeah. Okay, so there's like a set of problems with your reply. The first thing is that under their own view, the PSR that they're presenting, they're taking it that that, right, entails a contradiction, irrespective of whatever commit background commitments you have. Because it was the case about it's going to depend on what background commitments you have. Assuming that classical logic is given, right, because we could have other logic that just allows for contradictions and so on, and the discussion wouldn't be that much interesting. The whole, like, dialtism doesn't just entail that anything can be a contradiction. Right, assuming classical logic, they're saying that that given that given their argument is going to entail a contradiction of the form p and not p, right? Um, so we're assuming some form something sorry, akin well, sorry, to classical. Sorry, Wait, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. Right, I let you finish. He just wants you to clarify. Let me finish. Oh let me finish. Let me finish, down. and I'll I'm clarify. Down. Stop what screaming. He just he just interrupted me. I spoke. He just wanted a clarifying question. This isn't a time debate. Let me finish. Let me finish. It's not a time debate. Let me let me look. Look, 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 just notice the mod abuse, right? Um, I Amazing. spoke 20 seconds, mods I was cut off. are abusing you and you're right? abusing us. You oh, are because you're over talking. Guys, just let, okay, right. it's fine. Just let me and him talk. Right. I'm sorry for so, interrupting you. I right. thought I could just ask right. a so, Go ahead. Continue. So look, look, right. So under their view, they think the PSR just entails a contradiction given any background assumption. Now, under my view, right, it's fair to ask me, hey, what's your philosophy of science, right? What do you think an explanation is, right? What do you think? What do you think it amounts to a justified argument or not? Um, what What do you think 
do you think there's like a principle of explanation or do you not think there's a principle of explanation? Do you think it's more like going out and looking for gold, right? You can, you can like go to Mexico, right? You can go and look for like in Tijuana. You can go and look for gold or not, right? You can expect to find gold or you can expect not to find gold. There isn't like a guarantee of finding gold, but you think there is going to be gold there or do you think there is some set principle that guarantees that there are going to be explanations such that... Um, if there is a, if there is not an explanation for something, then you just haven't looked enough, or you just don't have the adequate tools. I think those are like fair questions, but that's not what's being debated here. We're not debating philosophy of science, right, um, or philosophy of explanations. What we're debating is specifically whether or not the pr a principle of the contingency argument, the Avicennian contingency argument, is going to be an analytic truth or a synthetic truth. And so these other questions are going to be irrelevant. I don't mind debating those questions. I actually think those are very interesting questions because I think once you clarify those things, there couldn't be a successful argument, a successful abductive argument. I actually think that undermines like natural theology to clarify what explanations are. But that's just not what the dialectic is about. The dialectic is just about whether denying the PSR as they understand it entails a contradiction or not. And I've laid out a critique, right? And I'm just interested whether or not they can address that critique or not. And so far, they haven't really engaged with that critique. Okay. But Does see, that answer your question? See, seeing, yeah, yeah, that's fine. No, there's one part you didn't answer because the, the, the basically the punchline of, of, of what I said was me asking whether you think it is reasonable to, uh, you know, assume that contingent things have explanations. Oh, I don't, well, the thing is, I think I think that's going to that's gonna be false for like a set of arguments, right? There's an argument from model collapse and there's an argument for like counter's theorem that there can't be a set of all contingent explanations just given counter's theorem and so there just couldn't be a psr uh there has to be given counter's theorem there has to be like some contingent thing explained yeah yeah but but, but, but i was no no hold on hold on i'm not done i'm not done i'm mid-sentence bro i'm mid-sentence let me finish and then you can speak but i don't think i need like once engaging with these type of arguments, I don't think I, I don't have any burden of giving an argument against the premise. They just have a burden of proving the premise. And so I'm just going to take the position of an agnostic and say, what's the argument? Yeah, but right now you're talking to me. So I think so. So let's move on from the whole it entailing a contradiction. But, but and, then you're and, just shifting and, the dialectic, but, right? So you're, you're interrupting me. I'll, I don't really mind that, but you seem to be very, uh, you know. No, no, I'm just, uh, I'm just saying. About it. I'm no, I'm not, just saying I'm you're not, changing the discussion. Then I don't mind that, yeah, but yeah, I'm just, I'm just making I was that clear. clear. About that. I was clear about okay. that when I came in. So what I'm saying is, so, so, so you're, you're talking about mortal collapse, and I was talking specifically about an, a, a, a sort of like epistemic based PSR where you behave as though contingent things have propositions. You're not going to have all those like set theoretic, you know, uh, concerns and, and, and stuff like that because you, you, it's just ep an, an epistemic PSR. And I'm asking whether you think it is reasonable to behave as if contingent things have explanations and just run with that principle. Oh, okay, I understand your you. question. Right, so I think the problem with your question, well, I don't think there's a problem with the question, but I think, sorry, I think there might be a confusion between like a pragmatic justification and epistemic justification. Um, so what I think is that once you're going out looking for gold, right, just, just think of the gold example, right? It's not the case that I think it's if I discover, let's say, some new area of land, that by principle, like any new area is going to have gold, right? Um, but nevertheless, I'm going to be looking: is there some gold here, or is there not some gold here? And I think that I'm going to have the same attitude towards explanations, right? If like some new area is discovered, I'm going to see. Or if we go like on more fundamental levels of scientific explanations. I'm going to ask uh, whether that's like fundamentality and like compositions or even in time, right? I'm going to ask, well, how far can we go uh, of finding explanations until we like hit like a hit like a block or how fundamental can we go in terms of compositions before we hit like a block and we can't go any further. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to find that like in terms of epistemically speaking, the best explanation is going to be the one that's like most fundamental and that goes further more and goes most further back. I'm not going to hell it that unless something like hits like something necessary, 
or provides an uh, or an infinite regress or something, or has an explanation for everything. That's a satisfactory explanation. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna like in terms of theory choice, grade the theories of the most fundamental and the mo and the one that can provide that can go back most further. And these are just like the theoretical virtues that we call explanatory scope, explanatory depth, and so on. And I'm Sorry, what do you mean? Can you explain what you mean by most further? Further, what do you mean? All right, so like for example, if one theory just like bottoms out in the, sing like the cosmological singularity, right, um, of this universe, but we have some other universe that just has no problem of giving an explanation of why there's a singularity rather than no singularity in terms of some other explanation while counting for every other explanation that the um, singularity thesis can account for. I'm just going to take that to have like a broader explanatory scope. And since we take explanatory scope to be a theoretical virtue, I'm going to take that to be a better explanation. So the way I proceed is by what is called abductive reasoning and theoretical virtues, not by some kind of an a priori principle that every contingency has an explanation. Okay, so but what what would it be that the so I'm sorry, did you say like a prior universe or something or? No, I'm, I was giving like an example. I was just. I know, I know, if... I know. So I'm concerned with the example. What I'm asking is, so so you're saying that if there was a prior universe or something that provides an explanation for the singularity, then that theory that posits such a universe would have a broader you no know, explanatory. If, if you have some other theory. I can explain everything that this theory can explain, plus something that this theory can posit as a um, as a um, as a as a brute fa a brute necessity or something. It's gonna it's gonna be a better theory in terms of explanatory scope, but it might perform worse in terms of like ontological economy or simplicity or other things. Okay. So for example, yeah, yeah, I guess we agree. So right? for example, so... I'll give you an example, right? I just say that like we have like a perfect physics or something that just bottoms out in like a set of laws and initial conditions uh, where I say, look, given these initial conditions and these laws and this state, I can explain every, th every observation that you have, but I take these initial laws and initial conditions and so on to be necessary. But now you come with like a different theory and you say, hey, I'm just going to posit that law that God created these things. Um, and the theory is just going to be identical. It's just going to be that you have the extra step of God, right? Then you might say, hey, I have more explanatory depth because I can even explain the thing that you're positing as an explanation. But the problem is your theory is just going to perform better in terms of ontological economy and simplicity, even though it has like better, uh, even though it has better like explanatory depth. And then it's just going to depend on what calculus we have for like weighing the theoretical virtues. But this is like different than engaging with some kind of an a priori principle that just excludes any brute facts like the PSR does, which the contingency. But okay. So, but then if you do take this, okay. So if you do take a step back, so let's say to that like prior universe, right. And you mm -hmm. say that it has like a, maybe it has like a broader explanatory scope, uh, but, but it's, it, if I'm understanding correctly, it would seem like the, the, just stopping at the singularity just explains you know, explains it in the exact same way because what the like prior universe, if that's the stopping point, you'd have a brute contingency there too. So no, these but, two would be okay. I understand. So the problem is going to be this, right? Because in the in the theistic explanation, whatever you posit of God, I can po posit of the singularity and the laws. So if you say that God is a brute contingency, sort of like the Swinburnian view, because Swinburne says God to be contingent. But a brute contingent. Uh, I'm just gonna affirm. I can just affirm that of the universe and the laws, and my theory is gonna outperform your theory in terms of um, ontological economy uh, and simplicity, because every proposition I'm affirming, you're affirming, but there are propositions you affirm that I don't affirm, and so there's gonna be more likelihood that my thesis is more probable than your thesis. On top of that, you're affirming. A more a broader ontological category than I am, uh, but you could nevertheless claim that hey, at least the thing you posit as a brute, I can explain, and then we're just gonna like look at like the um, um, calculus that we have of okay. theoretical virtues okay. to compare the two theories. But this is 
this is like very different from like positing something like the PSR on an explanatory principle, because those are meant to be in some sense like universal absolute. Well, to say that like yeah, anything, yeah, just, anything that's hold on, done speaking, that anything that's like contingent has an explanation. And I'm just saying, well, what's the argument for that? And so far, we have yeah, so first, the thing is, I just yeah, wanna one, one. Okay, okay, okay. The thing is, the fundamental flaw with your theory is that you believe that all the ontological propositions are dependent upon another proposition. And I think that leads to a logical contradiction. And when the last time when we were talking, you also accepted that if I have to make uh, this an infinite disjunction true, I, it would be impossible because uh, I would not find any proposition that would I, that would be true for the disjunction to be true, and this is a fundamental flaw in your theory because. No, I never said such a thing. Okay, uh, I can tell I you what I said. I can tell you what I said. Okay. So I think last time you made so last time you made like a set of confusions, uh, right? And okay. you didn't even know. Uh, Hold on, let me let me let me answer. Let me answer. No, I was not finished. Why are you shouting? Man. I'm not shouting. When you're you done, have... when you're done, you... let me know. Okay, okay. You you are shouting, man. You are shouting. When I, when you're done, let me be know. Calm. Okay, be calm. Don't shout. The thing is, if if uh, you want to play, look, debate. look, look. The whole debate. If you want to say, don't shout, be. The whole, the whole debate fundamentally. Don't don't cry later when debate, I make fun of you, okay? Because you did okay. last time. Okay. I don't mind playing rough, but just don't. I'm just making that clear. Don't cry later, but. The thing is, the fundamental framing of this debate is very simple. On one side, HT says that all the ontological propositions are dependent, right? So what he is saying that for every ontological proposition, for every existent, the proposition that it I'm exists, not saying such right? a thing, by the way. Just... No, you are saying... Oh, I'm not saying such saying a thing, by the way. Yeah, yeah, you are saying it is possible. It is possible, right? I'm not saying such a thing either, by the way. Just make that clear. Okay, do you think it is possible for every ontological proposition to be dependent upon another proposition? No, I'm saying when I'm agnostic about the PSL, I'm agnostic whether it's possible or not. Either it is possible or it's not possible. He's yeah, I'm agnostic firm about in his lack of knowledge. You, you, you understand? You understand? Look, look, okay, look. Okay. I understand. Look, okay. look, let me. Can I, can I answer you on this or not? No, no, you, you cannot. I, under, I understand what you are saying. Say. Look, look, look. Yes. You don't. No, I'm not finished. Okay, is, once okay, you finish. Oh, okay, okay. So he's saying, oh, I don't know whether it is possible or not. Okay, I am going to demonstrate an argument which will show to you that why all ontological propositions cannot be dependent upon another proposition, right? And I, I, I'll show it to you. Now, take this proposition, for example, that there is existence, right? This proposition would be true whenever uh any any proposition about an existent would be true right for example whenever the proposition that x existent exists or and you can fill in any existent in that whenever this proposition would be true even one the proposition that there is existence would be true now both of us agree uh, uh, and i can demonstrate as well that the proposition that there is existence is not a dependent proposition right because if the proposition that there is existence was dependent uh, was a dependent proposition then it would depend upon something else right but it is impossible for existence in itself to depend upon something else to exist because the only thing that can entail existence would be something that is non existence but non existence is the negation of existence so non existence cannot entail existence right and uh, both of us agree with this so now uh, what oh, by the way i don't agree with i don't agree with that but um, the premise in question that i question on the Abyssinian argument i was not finished oh so, but at, but you just said we both agree so you, don't make claims okay, about okay okay, okay. We, we don't, don't make we don't make claims make about it. me okay, don't make okay, 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 so, okay so you think non-existence can entail existence just to be clear oh no i never said i never said that i never said that i never said agnostic on the possibility said, that non-existence non cannot entail existence yes. he said we agree, oh that's not the part no that's not the disagree. part i dispute that's not the part i disputed okay that's that's what i'm talking about. the part so that i disputed wait should i clarify do you 
non existence cannot entail existence that is what i am saying right and i think everyone agrees on that because non existence is the negation of existence it's non existence right and existence is existence so not p cannot be an, in an implicative relationship with p right because whenever p not p uh, not p is not possible and whenever not p p is not possible right so they cannot be in an implicative relationship so that that is settled uh, if you question that then then you can say something if you question do you i was question questioning this? that there I was questioning that its existence is a necessary proposition. No, no, I am not saying that. I am not saying that. Right? When when I presented the argument as well, I did not say this. Uh, we can argue whether it is a necessary for now, for now, whatever. That's not the point of the discussion. Now, what you say is that it's a brute contingent proposition, right? It is a contingent proposition, but it is a brute proposition. I say it is a necessary proposition, right? I I I can grant you even the fact that you believe that it's, it can be a brute a brute proposition. That still doesn't affect my argument in any way. Now, my argument is this: what I am saying is that the propositions, right? every ontological proposition cannot be dependent upon another ontological proposition why because if every ontological proposition is dependent upon another proposition and i i'll try to intuitively explain it as well if every ontological prop, uh, proposition is dependent upon another proposition right now let us imagine we have two structures of uh, of uh, ontological propositions one structure is not true right in this structure there is no truth and in the other structure there is truth right now i want to make this structure in which there is no truth for it to be true right but it would be impossible for me to make it true right how because i want to insert truth value into this structure but for every proposition that i would look into this structure i would find another proposition that i have to first make true for this proposition to become true right so this structure would never become true and reality would never exist at the first place right so that's why there has to be an ontological proposition even if it is a brute contingent for that ontological proposition to be independent now i can give you a more intuitive example a more okay, intuitive done? example no i'm not done a more okay. intuitive example a more intuitive example would be like this suppose that you have a, a mirror for example you have an infinite series of mirrors right now what mirrors do is that they reflect light right they do not generate light they do not have the capacity of generating light but they can attain light through another that is exactly the same as uh, a contingent proposition or an or, or a, or a dep- sorry not contingent a dependent proposition attaining truth value through another just like a mirror attains truth value or uh, attains light through reflection of another mirror right now what what person a person who says that all ontological propositions are dependent but they are essentially saying is this that there is an infinite series of mirrors where mirrors are passing of of light upon each other but no mirror essentially has light but there is light in the mirror and there is no light source that is exactly what they are uh, positing and now i can give you a, uh, an even more simpler example that is through uh, logic i don't know logic and uh, no i am not done in logic i am, i will present my argument then you can speak as much as you want in logic we have something like for example uh, they are called and gates right now for a, for an and gate to be true right both the inputs or all the inputs no matter how many they are they have to be true right now the thing is that by the way you just said end gate yeah. means all the proposition has to be true yes yes okay don't take it all back the... later don't take it back later yes i know now the proposition by the way i hope somebody is recording by the way okay okay sure all ontology you speak a lot and then you say don't shout don't shout don't speak why are you not oh no i don't want you to take it back later because it okay okay now the thing is for this person for any person who posits that every ontological proposition is dependent it they what they're essentially saying is that they are dependent such that they cannot be true so they are like an and gate such that they cannot be true if prior propositions are not true right 
and and gate in itself cannot have any truth value because it's just a conjunction right now we but we have in in their model for someone who is saying that every ontological proposition is dependent what they are essentially saying is that every ontological proposition is like an and gate and and gates obviously do not have any truth value in their own self because they are just functions they 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 can only have truth values when there is a base proposition that is the direct input in this function but in their in their model there is no direct input into this function at the first place so the no uh, proposition can be true at the first place so their whole idea that every ontological proposition is a is a dependent proposition is utterly false and nobody can defend it because it leads to a logical contradiction now i am done and and the conclusion are, to are this you done is now? that the, uh, no uh, the last thing the conclusion to this is that there is a proposition that is uh, the pro proposition that there is an existent for for at least one existent the proposition that it exists is an independent proposition such that it does not depend upon any other proposition okay are you done now yes okay so what i'm going to show is that the mirror example begs the question against the uh, begs the question and that the um, AND gate example is just a confusion of this guy not understanding how logic works. Right, so let's begin with the first thing he said. He says, ontological proposition. By that, he just means a proposition that affirms some existence. For example, there's a, there's a cat or there's a dog or something. That's all he means by ontological proposition. He said that um, every ontological proposition cannot be dependent on another ontological argument. He, what he means here is counterfactual dependency. For example, if A depends on B, then it's true that if B didn't exist, then A didn't exist. This is all he means. This is the this is what he said, by the way. He said because if if every ontological proposition, let us imagine, we have two structures. We have two, one not true, the other truth. I want to make the structure not true to true. It will be impossible. I want to insert the truth value into this structure ad infinitum. The problem is if we have a set of of propositions that are all complex and there are no um, uh, atomic propositions there's going to be a couple of problems with this one is that even a well-formed sentence is going to be the first problem the second problem is are the truth values already given to us or do we have to assign them and is it stipulated that we can't assign truth values directly to the complex propositions without assigning it to those constituents if this is the case then it's just going to be the classical confusion that these have been making between endless series and beginningless series, right? If somebody came to us now and gave us the, not the last, not the, not the, not the proposition in questions, but its previous constituents, which will themselves be complex propositions. And he said, hey, I've been, I've been assigning truth values from like a beginningless series. And here I'm assigning you, uh, this disjunction has the following, this, or this conjunction has the following, this has this following, this has this following. There will be no contradiction in us taking those and assigning, and assigning a truth value to the proposition in question, because that would be a beginningless series. And that wouldn't traverse an infinite, because for any, any, any element in that set, the, dist the distance between that and the, and, the, and, and, the, and the current moment would be a finite distance. But if he's asking us to assign them right now, that would be to, that would be to traverse an infinite would be an impossible. So, but that would have no bearing upon whether or not the PSR would be true. Actually, the previous example wouldn't have any bearing on the PSR either. Now let's go back to the, so this point right here that he made here is really irrelevant to the PSR. Now let's go to the other point that he made. He said, all ontological truths are dependent on an infinite regress the way mirrors are. And he said, look, mirrors don't have lights by themselves, but they just reflect mirrors. Now imagine you have an infinite regress of mirrors. The problem here is there's no contradiction in saying that we have an infinite regress uh, of mirrors. And for every mirror in the set, there's a previous mirror that reflects its light, right? That would be completely consistent. But he could ask, hey, where is the light from, right? And this is just like an, a classical argument made by Aquinas, which is the following, right? Even though every element in the set can explain each other, such that there's no element in the set that is left unexplained, what's going to explain the set? What's going to explain why this set obtains rather than a different set? But the problem is we can just say, look, it's just going to be a brute contingency that this set obtains rather than a different set, but nevertheless, each element in the set is explained. But you say, look, the set can't be brute. It's just to beg the question against the proponent who's questioning the PSR. And so for him to say that the set can't be 
uh, for him to say that the set can't be taken to be brute or to say that why there's light in the set is to be brute is just to beg the question, right? Why can't the light in the set be brute? That's going to okay, be quite uh, an argument. The, the last thing, question? the last thing he said, no, I'm not done yet. Okay. Okay. I'm not done. And my, and my engagement was with Ilyeska. The last thing he said is that every end gate is like an ontological proposition. When the, no, it's not. H here's the problem, right? Um, there's a difference between saying, when you say that, the pro sorry, every ontological, here's what you said, every ontological proposition is like an end gate. That's what you said. And this is just like blatantly embarrassing because here's the difference. There's a difference between saying a proposition is complex and saying a proposition is dependent. Last time you explained dependency as counterfactual dependence, meaning that if one proposition is true, then some other proposition has to be true, meaning that if proposition A is true, then, sorry, if proposition A is false and proposition B is false, means that proposition B depends on proposition A. This can stand as a relation between atomic propositions, right? So this has nothing to do with complex propositions. So the question now is, why is it the case that we can't have brute atomic propositions? Because last time, when you gave the hierarchy of propositions that are disjunctions and conjunctions and disjunctions and conjunctions, that was completely relevant to the argument because we can just say, hey, why can't there be brute atomic propositions? So you just get, so that's what we need an argument for. Okay, may, may so I ask was, a clarifying question? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Um, so right now, when you were talking about the mirrors, right? So mm -hmm. mirrors in this example being defined as that which has the ability to contain light, but not that which can individually produce light on its own, because, you know, dependent. Sure. So, you said with an infinite set of mirrors, you said mm -hmm. that there's no contradiction, right, entailed by specifically there only being dependent and only being mirrors and still having light, right? So, you said that. Mm -hmm. So, but originally, it was my understanding of your position, right, that you said you don't even know, like, you're agnostic as to whether there is a contradiction or not, right? So well, like, I was never agnostic right. to the contradiction part. Oh, so you know there's not. What I'm agnostic? No, what I'm agnostic towards is whether a PSR is true or not. Oh no, no, I'm saying uh, this specific. Anyway, oh, so you, anyway, you know, let me speak now. What you okay. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, let me let me clarify Hadi's question. What's wrong with you? Let other people talk. No, no, relax. Man. What's okay. wrong with you? It's okay with you. Now. Sorry, Hadi. You, you, you Hadi, what was your answer. question? It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I'm. I was just saying, I was just clarifying. He doesn't have a question. Okay, he okay. Have a question. So I'll, I'll, let, I'll, let, I'll let your master talk for you, Hadi. Sorry, guys. Yes, okay. yes, inshallah. Master what, what, Ilyas, what, take it away. Let me yeah, finish. Let me finish. That's, okay, sorry, what were you saying? Yeah, yeah. Whenever you make an insult, I will make an insult back. I didn't make an insult. You I just idiot. said. Okay, let's carry on. This minute. Well, I didn't make an so, insult. I just you're, you're the one insulting the Hadi guy, but no, no, no. You so anyway, what what I have said, you have absolutely misunderstood. I was not even making a defense for PSR. <laughs> well, you know, so when you so you so when you said, didn't you just start your conversation by showing you show the denial of PSR entails a contradiction? No. I oh, you didn't you say that? Not, nope. I think you are not even understanding me. Oh, okay. By the way, this is being recorded, so we can go back to that and see if you yeah, said yeah, that. Yeah. There's no problem. I clearly said. Right. I clearly said. I think you don't mm -hmm. even listen to what the other person is saying. What I clearly said was that whether the PSR is true or not, it doesn't have a bearing on this argument that I'm presenting, and I'm not presenting an argument for the PSR. Oh, so you're not presenting what? the contingency argument? Okay. Yeah, I am presenting a type of a contingency argument that doesn't depend on PSR. And you didn't listen to the argument. The thing is, you. Oh no! But, but you said you no. said denying the PSR entails a contradiction, and you're going to show no. the contradiction. No, he I said, said denying what he an said. independently existing thing. Denying that entails a contradiction. Yes. Wait. So if you're not wait 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 hold on hold on no problem if you're running an argument that does not depend on the PSR just give me the argument what are the premises what what's the think? conclusion and what's the rule of inference. Okay, so That's HT, exactly. HT, when we you already did. You're not even paying when, when, attention. HT, you, let me just sum wait, it up. So maybe the, the maybe okay. the guy called Muslim metaphysician can repeat the argument, the yeah, premises, the he conclusion. Me, he, the, will. Uh, he, will. Well, bro. he will when he went. Oh no, no, I want the other guy who said that. he did to repeat the argument no, because no, he wait, clearly wait, heard it. Elias an argument. Elias gave you an argument, and you, um, you know, unintentionally projected onto that argument that exactly. he's talking about PSR. I've given an argument on why denying PSR is contradictory. 
Um, you never answered it. At least I think. Oh you no, did. I did. But you think, I did. But yeah, well, you think you did. You think you did, which is fine. Oh no, I did. But but, but you let, you ran away before I gave the answer. Oh my god. So, uh, well, uh, well, I can I can repeat lies. it if you want. Maybe you, you keep complaining about people cutting you off. Oh, but, like, but don't say I didn't. If you have life, if you have a life, if you have a life and you have to go away, don't say I didn't. Screaming battle every time. Yeah, just say you didn't hear it. Then don't say don't say I didn't give it. Stop screaming. Let him. He just said I didn't give a reply. If he had to leave, just say he had to leave and he didn't hear. Okay, everyone thinks the other person is wrong, if, right? That doesn't. He just said, "I never gave a reply." He is lying. You think you gave a reply, and I accept that you believe you gave a reply. Okay, okay. I accept that you believe it. I don't, but you do, and maybe some believe. Oh, so how was it not a reply? No so wait, wait, wait. What was my reply no the second time? Can you repeat again, my reply? You, you, uh, well, I, I, I missed it because, I, again, I had to go away. But oh, so you don't even know what my reply is, but you're making a claim about my reply? Even yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Because, because you've given wait, how do you know what my... How do you know... It, You've, wait, how do you know if it was a sufficient you, reply or not if you left? Because from past inductive experience dealing with you, your reply... Oh, so you're just assuming, oh, you're just assuming that the reply wasn't good. Is, is in, in, that that is <laughs> oh, so, so what's the past inductive, sorry, what's the past induction besides one case? The past induction is all the different conversations I've had with you. Oh, okay, so how many, how many conversations have we had? We've had several, we've had several wait, conversations. several on this argument? Yeah. Just in general? Yeah. Okay, how many, how many, how many have we had? We've had at least, you know, three or four. Okay, so from from three cases, that's a, that's a good inductive inference. Yeah, because in all. all oh, okay, so then you just okay, okay, okay. So you have like a bad. Okay, so you have a bad inductive argument. Go ahead. You were just recycling the same old thing. Oh, did I, did I give the same one now? Uh, it's the same. It, oh, you just change. You change the language. You try to go into semantics. Oh, so it's the same I reply. Accept, HP, I accept that you believe you gave. Wait, it was it the same reply or not? Say yes or no. Uh, but my friend, as far as I'm concerned, all your replies are basically the same. They're I don't care what you're concerned. I'm asking you different questions. Yeah, yah. Yeah. So the brother is in an was interrogation it, room. Question it's is one: Was it the same reply? And two: yeah, Is three instances sufficient for a good inductive yes, inference? It's essentially, it's essentially the same reply. Now, I want to move to Ilias's argument. So you think that. My wait, wait, how was it? Okay, work. so what? How was it oh essentially the same God. reply? Again, if again, if you want. How was it the there, same reply? HP, why do you care if you're so Oh, because you just made a claim fine, that I know you, you can't back up. Oh, because why do you I don't care what I think. Why oh, because what I think? because you made a claim. You I want you to count, back it up. Do you, no, do you need do you need assurance from other people now that you made? A oh no, I don't care. I know I don't care about assurance. Okay. I just think you're okay. talking okay. out of your ass. That's why I'm asking uh, you to back it up. Well, we will see because the person who completely ignored Ilias's argument is now talking out of there. We are at. Wait, wait, so okay, what was now, okay? So, can you repeat Elias's argument then? Can you give me yes. the premises, the conclusion, yeah, the rule yes. of inference? Exactly. So, here's what okay, Elias is saying. So, Elias, unlike what I did, okay, he's not arguing for the PSR. He is granting you, he said, let us just suppose that you can have something that is contingent that exists without a cause. Like, let's say that's possible because you think it's possible. Agree? You think it's possible? Wait, when did I say I think it's possible? Well, by rejecting the PSR, you. Wait, when did uh, I reject the PSR? I'm sorry. When did I reject the PSR? You don't accept the PSR. Well, so wait, ac not accepting is the same as rejecting? Do you, do you think toxic states are binary? Yeah, do you yeah. think toxic states are binary? The non accepted Are doxastic states the, binary? No, no, no. Answer the question. The non accepted uh, No, it does matter. Are doxastic state binary? You either accept the uh, PSR or you no, 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 no. The doxastic yeah, yeah, state. I know what you're gonna say. I know what you're gonna uh, say. You're gonna say I don't state know. binary. I'm agnostic. I'm agnostic. I know that's your line. No, Again, no, no, no. This is why I said but, I have inductive. But have you inductive just admit you lied. Background information you just, about you. I, I know that. Everybody knows that. You Look, just admit I you lied. To Ilias's argument. No, don't you be just scared. admit you. Don't run away from Ilias's argument. Here's well, his argument. He didn't even he give an argument. You. He, yeah, he did. He gave an argument. Why are you so? Why are you? Oh, such here's, a here's what he why said. Here's what he said. Argument. My friend, here's what, here's what he said. He grants you. He grants mm -hmm. you that there should be a brute contingent. He grants you that. Okay, because that's what you've mm -hmm. been talking about. He says that's fine. What Elias is saying is that even if you suppose that there can be a brute contingent, though it is still logically the case that at least one reality in existence has to be something that exists independently. It oh, cannot be that. the case. 
Actually, that is exactly. I can what I can repeat said. what he said. I can repeat what he yeah, said. Yeah, he said one ontological property. That is exactly what he said. Here's, 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 here's what he you, said. You do not. You want me to repeat what he said? That's. I can repeat what he said. One ontological proposition. Proposition is independent on anything else. Yes, that's exactly. What that's what I said. I can, I can repeat, I can repeat what he said. Just have only dependent propositions. I can repeat what he said. But he just re uh, here's the thing. I clarified it, and Ilya said I'm right. So now the, oh, no, the, but, the original, but I, but I, the original oh, no, but, author. And but I'm just taking to be dishonest at this point. This, original and author the and the interpreter. Side. Oh, no, so but are you going to challenge? Yeah, but that's the not factoring in the dishonesty during the debate. No, 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 no. Dishonesty so that's an interesting... is when the author says X, the interpreter says X, and you still say Y. Why, wait, wait, why can't dishonest. the author? Wait, 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 why can't the author be dishonest? Okay, prove, prove, prove I am being okay. dishonest. So, so, okay, so, so am I gonna am I gonna be allowed to reply without interruption or not? His again, I'm gonna repeat one more time for you. The conclusion of Ilias's mm -hmm. argument is that reality cannot just be only dependent propositions there has to be at least one proposition that is independent that is his argument and he's saying that is just that repeating the psr accept... no i'm sorry no, how is that the no, psr no, where did you, he don't just the PSR. Oh, you don't God. understand Look, no because no. that one independent thing that at least one independent proposition that doesn't depend on something else you can still say it's a brutally contingent proposition but even if it's brutally contingent it doesn't depend on anything else well, that's just to conflate. Okay, so then in that case, that's so it. that's just gonna that's just gonna go back to my initial reply of kicking the can further down the road of asking why is everything contingent dependent. So, so either you, so either, you grant the conclusion. So look, no, I'm not. Look, I'm not granting anything. So I'm gonna repeat. Look, allow me to reply. Right, I'm gonna repeat his argument and I'm gonna address you. Right. So what you said is I denied the PSR. I never did such a thing. I have explicitly said multitude of times, in the sake of this discussion, I'm going to be agnostic, because I don't have a burden of denying it. The burden is upon the person who affirms it. Now, you just said that you know my position, but nevertheless, you said I denied it. But that is just you admitting that you're dishonest, right? that you're falsely attributing to me a doxastic state I do not hold. That's the first thing. The second thing is, here's what Elias said. Right? What Elias said is that every ontological proposition cannot be dependent on another ontological proposition. He just affirmed that proposition. He just affirmed that principle. Right? He didn't affirm right that's not gonna entail that's not gonna entail anything. He's gonna require some other things, right? To get the entailment that you affirm, uh, that you attributed to him. Then he tried to justify that by saying by talking about structures. But the structure thing doesn't entail anything. Because as I explained, he seems to confuse the way he defines dependency as counterfactual dependence with complexity as a logical connective, right? There's a there's a difference between saying one proposition can only be true if another proposition is true, and saying that this proposition is a complex proposition constituted of other propositions, right? So that's the first confusion he made. Then he went on to talk about the mirrors, and I addressed the mirror case. I said, look, it's got to be the case that every element, every mirror, can stand in a relation of having light reflected from another mirror in an infinite regress. Right. What's got what's gonna be, what's gonna require an explanation is why there's a light why there's light in the set. And I said, look, I, that can be taken to be a brute fact. And to deny that that could be a brute fact is just to affirm the PSR, which is the thing in question. And I said, this is just to make this is just like a bad rendition of the Aquin of Aquinas's argument that even though every element in the set can be explained by another element in the set, such as no element in the set is left without an explanation. There's not going to be an explanation for why this set obtained rather than some other set. But that is just to assume that there is a PSR, because why can't the set itself be a brute, whereas every element in the set is explained, right? And that is initially just to say, look, why can't the universe itself be brute, whereas everything in, within the universe be explained? Then he went on to say something else. He said, all in logic, we have something called end gate, which is just to talk about what philosophers call conjunction. And he said, every end gate is like an ontological proposition. But I explained this confusion because ontological propositions are such that they can't be true unless some other pro ontological proposition is true. But this is going to apply to atomic propositions and complex propositions. So they're not going to be like end gate. And the question is, why can't some atomic proposition, sorry, I meant atomic proposition. Why can't some atomic proposition, which is not like an end gate, it's going to be simple, be a brute 
be an ontological proposition. No, if, if you and nevertheless, simple, if you have granted simple, you have agreed with my argument. The, your you atomic say that, proposition yeah. is an independent proposition, so you grant the conclusion. Yes. So notice how I has muted mid sentence and the false attribute something to me. I Why can't an atomic proposition be a brute contingency that is an ontological proposition? Why can't the proposition there exists about, there exists look there exists a cat there exists a cat why is that that's going to be a logical prop that's going to be an atomic no. proposition no, why can't that be how is that how is that complex yes. proposition yeah how is it complex that's not the point, my friend. You, the point is no, he that no. That is the point because no, he just no, said no, end gate. No, no, he no, said no, end no, gate no, are no, equivalent no, to ontological. No, yeah, no, Khalil, no, you no, just no, hand waved the argument. Of, you've just no, hand waved over it. Notice yeah, how yes, Khalil no, misrepresented no, Elias's position no, by Elias's no, own no, admission. No, 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 no. Here's what Elias. Can you oh, let me speak? Can you Elias, Elias, you said end gate are the same as ontological proposition. That is, yes. they are dependent. Yes. That's not what that's. Khalil just said it doesn't matter. So he's misrepresenting no, it. Khalil, no. Khalil just said it doesn't matter. No, what doesn't matter is the brute contingency part. That's yeah, exactly. What that's what if that's what, what does matter yes. is independent or dependent. Now, in your exactly, view, exactly, exactly. That's what I was saying. Like, let's say there exists a brute contingent, okay? Like, let's just say you have a brute contingent X. Mm -hmm. So would it be the case so a brute contingent X exists without a cause? Okay, let's just take That's what scenario. brute means. That's what brute uh, means. Okay, but I'm just making sure you, you, you agree. So I, I don't no, but that's what misrepresent. brute means. Oh, my God. Great, okay, great. so you agree. Okay. So you agree there's okay. an independent ontological so proposition. No, I'm not, I'm not saying, no, he's, no, I'm not agreeing. No, he, just, he just said if. It's a conditional yes, statement. If, what the hell is wrong if, with you? Okay, okay, listen. So. If a brute contingent exists, uh -huh. mm -hmm. if it exists, would that be an independent existent or a dependent existent? Well, by, by your definitions, it would be independent. Yeah. Okay, what about by your definitions? I, I don't use the term dependence independent. No, no, okay. I'm asking you a question. If a brute, you, you de accept the definition of a brute contingent, right? That's a valid definition. So if a brute, I, I don't, I don't know what you mean by a valid definition, but it's like it's. Okay, do you disagree with a with the concept with the definition of a brute contingent or not? Well, I don't think definitions. I think you can agree or disagree with. It's just gonna depend what the intention of the author or what the meaning of the word is. Yes. So I'm talking about a contingent reality that exists and has no cause and no explanation. What What do you mean by reality? Do you mean everything is contingent, or do you mean some things I mean are contingent? Any contingent thing, any contingent entity. That exists right. with brutally, so it has no cause and no explanation. Okay. What do you think about that? Is it possible? Well, I'm gonna be agno Well, in this debate, I'm agnostic on that. You're agnostic so about what? Is it possible or impossible? Well, I'm agnostic whether it's possible or not. Okay, okay. If you're agnostic about it, then is it possible that it's possible? Well, what do you mean by it's possible? That it's possible. I I ask you, is this brute contingent thing? that exists without a cause is that possible you say i don't know if you don't yeah, but... know if you know mm -hmm. but you're agnostic so if you're agnostic then you would have to admit that it's possible that it's possible no i think you no now you're conflating a uh, logical possibility with epistemic possibility uh, no i want to know from you so you're agnostic okay you are yeah but when you're asking the question you're the you one agnostic? who's no, yeah. I'm trying to get a better understanding of where uh -huh. you stand. So you're saying you're agnostic on whether brute contingent is possible or not. You're agnostic on it. Stop but, moving yeah. me so, to the audio. Okay, well, I can, I can, okay, so, so well, you're, you're confusing epistemic possibility. No, I'm not. I'm just trying to ask so, you. I can explain your confusion. Look, con uh, questions. I want look, to know look, questions. are you agnostic on it? Look, look, conf look. Questions can be loaded questions, right? That makes assumptions. It's not right? a loaded question. It is. It, it, no, it's not. You're the one who said. You just that said. You don't accept. No, you don't accept the PSR. So at least, I never. At least, no, no, no. I never said. I never said I don't accept it. I said for the, for the sake of this discussion. You said it's for the, not proven. You're agnostic. You're Wait, hold agnostic. on, hold on. For the sake of this discussion, you don't accept. You I'm don't don't have a, Hold on. No, no, no. Because I don't accept. Look, because by not accepting, that can be interpreted as rejecting. But it can interpret it as merely not affirming it to be true. Yeah, so you yes, don't you do not affirm. affirm. You do not affirm. Okay, I, that doesn't right. mean you reject. You, That's, you don't, don't affirm it. If you don't affirm the PSR, 
if you mm -hmm. don't affirm the PSR, it follows from that that for you, a brutally existing contingent with no cause is possible. No, that doesn't follow. That's just to affirm the PSR. That's just to, to negate the PSR. But you don't affirm the PSR, so at least it's possible. No, that's not the case. Anyway, either in so reality, it's, it's either because to, reality there's a difference. Look, look, there's a difference we between saying debate, there's look, there's a difference between this. no, we because no. Let's come. Okay, let's okay, let me let me make it easier. Khalil is confused. No, Khalil, let's you're just confusing the no, model. Look, there's a no, difference. Let's put an if in front of it. No, let's put an if. Let's just. Put no, no, no. If. Let me just look. If. There's a difference. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about your problem. There's a difference between space. saying I'm agnostic on P yeah, and yeah, I have. I understand it. I get that, my friend. So talk. I get that you're agnostic. No, let him explain it. Wait, wait. You don't affirm and you don't yeah, they're like afraid of letting me speak for like ten seconds. It's like really tragic. No, no, because I'm trying to ask you a question, and you, you. No, but you, you already asked your question. No, no, no. Okay, so what's okay? Ask your questions and then let me speak. Go ahead. Okay, if if this is an if, mm -hmm. okay, if a brute contingent exists, if it exists, okay, and has no cause, then it's redundant. this brute. Yeah, okay, no, that's that's great. So if it's redundant, it's, this is even easier. Yes, yes. If a brute contingent exists, that is to say, something exists and has no cause, then this brute contingent would be non-dependent. It would be yes. non-dependent on, on and, anything and, else to exist. And simple. If by depend, well, look, if by the if all you mean by dependent is that there's a causal explanation, then yeah, that's going to be a tautology. Yeah, it has no yes, causal yes. explanation. No, no, no. Listen to this. There are only two possibilities. Either there's a brute contingent or there's a necessary existence. And in both possibilities, there's an independent. I, I know I keep getting muted, but that doesn't follow because the, because you ha you're going to have brute and non-brute contingencies, and then you're going to have necessities. No, no, so it's not going to be I'm binary. Saying, what I'm saying is that in reality, either a brute contingent exists Right or a necessary at least one necessary existence exists, right? I don't see how that follows. No. You fail to see a lot of things. What else? What? Wait, wait, so, so can the other guy? Can the guy who said I fail a lot of things explain the entailment? No, HT. What's the I can third explain possibility? That so Ilias gave you two. Ilias wait, I think some other guy. I think some other guy explained the explained the entailment. Let Doctor HT. HT, j just again, we're, we're, we're having a conversation here, all right? So Ilias said, look, there's only two possible situations, either a, a necessity or a brute contingency that's independent. Uh, you're saying, no, I reject that. So what is, logically speaking, what is like the third possible state of affairs? A non-brute contingent. Okay, so a non-brute contingent is what? It's going to be a contingent proposition that has an explanation. Okay. So are you saying that all of reality, so can, can, in reality, can you have just one non-brute contingent? Yeah, what do you mean? In all, in all of reality, there only exists a contingent proposition that is not brute. Well, that's going to depend on your view of self-explanations. But if you assume there's no such thing as self-explanation, then no. So that's gonna depend on like okay. your further view of like explanations. No, no, no. So, so if you is it possible to have let's take self-explanation out for a second. Mm -hmm. Is it possible in reality to have a non-brute contingent proposition, and that's the only proposition? If they can't be if they can't be like self-explanatory, then no. Okay. Otherwise, you could say it is self-explanatory. Yeah, self-explanatory is brute. Self-explanatory is brute. Yes. No, so, that's not so, gonna follow. So, so uh, again, is it possible? It's going to depend it's again what you mean by self-explanatory and brute. But I uh, go on. Uh, again, so Ilias is saying that in all of reality, the only logical possible states of affairs is at least one necessary proposition, or at least one brutally contingent proposition. So you don't uh, agree with this? Well, if he's right, well, I'm going to need to see the full argument for that, like all the premises and their role. Of well, the argument he gave. The argument he gave was basically that it is not possible that all propositions or all existence are dependent contingents. Yeah, that's the assertion. But what's the argument for yeah. that? 
the argument for that is basically um, without without any sort of independent reality or independent proposition, all these other propositions don't get any value. But that's just to repeat the claim. What's the argument for the claim? That's the ar- that is the argument. Now, what's the argument that these things wouldn't get a truth value? Look, I already explained this in the mirror case, right? Why can't... Okay, look, look, if I have one, if I have just two propositions, Uh they're contingents, but they're not brutes. Just two of Uh them. Uh There's nothing else. There's no other proposition. I have two non-brute contingent propositions. Is it possible that that's all there is in reality? Well, if if both are if both are like contingent and we don't accept self-explanatory, then the first one is going to be left without an explanation. Agreed. So then, can this even exist? No, but this is different from the thing you just stated earlier. No, no it is different. But I'm just asking you to answer that question. Can you just have if, two? If you have two, two things that propositions, if you have two non if you have two non-brute contingencies, yeah. um, and and you have A and B and, and B is explained. That's going to depend if A can explain B and B can explain A, if you allow such explanations. or not. So that's going to depend further on what philosophy of explanation you have in the background. Yeah, so again, if there's self-explanation... No, no, that's right? not self-explanation. There's a difference from saying that A explains A and saying that A explains B and B explains A. Okay, so again, can you just have one non-brute contingent? That's it. That's going to depend if you accept self-explanations or not. If it's self-explained, for, it's okay. necessary, no? So let's say, for example, let's say I have self-explanation. Okay, then you can have that. Okay, so what would explain the brute contin- the, the non-brute contingent itself? Right, yeah. If you accept self-explanation, then I don't see that the problem. You're going to have to specify okay, more good. conditions okay, as so, to so why that's possible or impossible. Something that's, okay, good, good. So some contingent proposition that's self-explanatory, right? Is it caused by anything? Well, now you're introducing a new relation of causation. I thought we're talking yeah, in terms does, of explanation. Yeah, does it depend on anything other than itself? Well, is that like I'm making a right? wait? But now we're mean, talking about three. Mean, hold on. Now we're talking about. On itself. Oh my God! Let me speak for like a second, right? There's there's gonna be a distinction between dependence, causation, and unless you just take dependence to be a causal relation, and explanation. Right, but but we can specify the so same conditions the, for all three. We can say self. Hold, I'm not done speaking. What's wrong oh, with you? Okay, man. Right, you okay, can have, right, you can ahead. have, right. We can just say it's going to depend whether or not what you're assuming in the background allows for self causation, or self dependency, or self explanation. Now you can exclude. Now if you exclude that, I'm just gonna, I'm just going by whatever metaphysics you're assuming. If you exclude that, then I'm gonna say no. If you include that, it's gonna be yes. But there are. There are there are like philosophers, for example, like Proust has a version of the um, has a version of the Kalam argument. Uh, with, it's called ca- with the um, what was it called again? Proust and I think it was Gale, Gale has, an, has a version argument. of it. Right? Yeah. yeah where Proust where the explain where yeah no but where 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 the final explanations would be self-explanatory. And so he allows for a self-explanatory, uh, sorry, Richard Gale and Alexander Proust yet, ha- allow for such a relationship. Now, if you don't allow, now, I'm not interested in, deba- in debating whether or not the relationship is possible or not, because I just think that's going to depend on a lot of things in the background. I'm just asking you, I'm just making it conditional, right? If you accept this, then this is going to be the conclusion. If you don't accept this, this is going to be the conclusion. And I'm just going to go by what you say, and then I'm just going to ask you to justify whatever position you take. Because I'm not holding any position in this debate. Because the burden is only on you. That, that, that's part of the issue, right? Like you don't hold any position. So I don't need don't to. Hold, the burden is fully no, on you. When when you don't hold when you don't hold any positions, what it allows you to do is you can adopt ad hocly different positions to just counter whatever example. That's no, but look, but okay, that's, look, that's. A, Look, that's it's irrelevant what I believe or what I don't believe. If you okay, think the argument is sound, it's fine. It's fine. It's irrelevant. Look, it's fine. I, I'm, yeah, not so, so Sorry, I'm, not I'm not done speaking. Sorry, I'm not done speaking. Sorry, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done speaking though. But I'm not done speaking though. I was mid-sentence, right? I'm not allowed. Can we? Right. Can we go back? Right. You guys speak for like ten minutes, and I get cut off after like one minute. Just asking you a question, bro. Right. So, well, here's the point, right? We can we can approach we can make like some kind of an. Approach where we just talk about like background theories 
or like explain or like our theories of everything or something and just compare those or we can talk in terms of like whether an argument is sound or not but when you claim that something like the contingency argument is, is sound you're claiming that each of the premises are true and when you further on that claim that each of the premises are you can give a justification for that then the burden is all upon you it's not upon me Right. So I can just assume agnosticism on every premise. You're still going to have the burden of giving me an argument for each. And so far, we haven't even been given an argument for each. Okay. Is, the, is there any saying? argument? Is there any time? I'm just curious, though. Can you give us an example uh, of a deductive argument uh, that you uh, accept? Well, but it wouldn't be relevant if I don't accept any deductive argument. Because no, once you're the, claiming... No, but I want to know. I just want to know. Look, is there any deductive argument whose premises you accept? Look, I'll, I'll I'll answer your question in a more satisfying way, right? I think that we might it, it might be the case it might be the case, right? That me and you, we have different epistemic standards, and in that case, we'll just like I'll just explain what I take a good argument to be, and you'll just explain what you take to be a good argument. Or it might be the case that we agree on the standards, but we just disagree whether or not this argument meets the standard. Now, okay. when you say when you say you think that the um, the contingency argument is a good argument. And uh, what we should start with is just ask, uh, asking you, like, what do you think a good argument is? And, I'll, and then we'll, like, shift the argument to, like, an epistemic discussion mm -hmm. instead of, like, that, discussing oh, the premises. No, mm -hmm. Let us come back to like, the but, uh, but, uh, but the problem is but we haven't really made the progress. Question, hold on, hold on. Is argument that you accept? I, I just want to know. I want to know where you stand so are, in general. Well, I'm not sure if you're, like, familiar with them, but, like, I accept, like, Frege's argument. Um, which is like a deductive argument. Um, I probably accept like some form of like divine hiddenness or like the pro logical problem of evil, uh, but I take those to be like internal critique, not external critique. So I don't think those are like relevant examples. But as like an external argument, I think like Frege's argument for Sorry, Platonism is like Frege's a good argument. argument for what? Platonism? Yeah, for uh, for external for like for like the for like propositions like being abstract. For, no, for propositions being abstract. For example, I think that's like a good deductive yeah. argument but i probably think that in my and accepting it, hold on i'm not done speaking what's wrong with this guy here he, he asked me i want to qualify my answer right but i think like in accepting any deductive argument is just going to depend on what like theory you have in the background okay, because what okay, renders the much. what's rent wait where am i being cut off what i think renders the premise plausible and not plausible to you is just going to depend on what like metaphysics what like hinges you have in the background or not Okay, can we come back okay. to the argument now? So, so let's just come back to this argument. Go ahead, Amir. Yeah, what we are saying is very simple. We are saying they, there is a proposition, an ontological proposition, that is not externally... Ex I'm not saying that. No, we I'm asking for the argument that. for why that's not possible. It's been like two hours, and we said I've been given an argument. <laughs> Have we heard an argument for why a brood contingency is possible? No, but we don't need such no. an argument. The burden is upon okay, them. About, but no, this? but that didn't, weren't you the one that introduced this? the idea that a brood contingency is possible? No, 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 no. What I said is why? Why we're isn't a brood contingency a, possible? Yeah, I don't need to affirm that it's possible. Okay, but well, would you agree? We're not, we're not even on that. We're not even yeah. on that. This is now about it, it, the, the argument has moved on. We've granted the possibility of brute contingency just for the sake of this. What this is about is it's very simple. Um, can all, is it, is it logically possible that every single ontological proposition is dependent? We say this dependent. is not logic. You, we say this is not logically possible. You say that it is. Uh, yes, we mean Wait, externally explained. I don't, no, externally I don't need, explained. I don't need to say it's logically possible. I'm just going to ask you what's yeah, the deduction. Yeah. Okay, what's the deduction okay. to a contradiction? And you haven't given well, such a deduction. First, yet. HD, um, may, if I may add, I just want to ask a clarifying question. Do you accept that contradictions are false? Yeah, we can assume classical logic. I don't have. We can assume I'm, the I'm saying, like, contradiction. You, I know, I know, I know. I'm saying like yeah, for the sake, yeah, 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 for the sake of the discussion. Sake of I'm just asking you, like, do you no, accept actually reality. discussion? Like, do you actually accept that contradictions are false? Well, see, when you say like. For the sake well, of so going to introduce like a lot of things in the background that let's just going to uh, so derail no. the conversation. It, it's important, though, right? No, I mean, we're I, trying to convince you. No, I do. No, I, no, I, I know I do. But um, I'm saying, um, what I'm interested in is to show that given classical logic, you can show that this argument is. Self. Okay, I know, I know. But I'm saying, like, if we can show that given classical logic that it's a contradiction, would you believe it and accept well, see, it? 
See, it depends what you mean by what do you believe, because I'm like a conventionalist about logic, so I just take whatever. So I just take like the axioms of logic to be like a convention. But I would so say I'm part no. of the convention. No, it's a yes, because I will be part of a convention that does accept. Okay, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Like, okay, okay. I'm more asking you a practical question, time. actually. I'm not really uh, going to... But, uh, but see, this is just going to be irrelevant I mean, on the bear, on the claim no, 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 of the other you're people. Off, you're cutting me off, bro. I haven't spoken for like three hours. I'm just not listening. Come on. No, but this is irrelevant to HD, the discussion. No, right? it's it's, re it's very relevant to the discussion. Okay, how is it relevant? Contradiction. Okay, Wait. may I explain without getting cut off? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, well, you cut me off? No, thank you. Okay, now... I am taking a very simple claim. It is relevant to the discussion whether you accepting contradictions to be false. Why is this? This is why. Because we are in the discussion, right, for the purpose of convincing you of a certain belief. Right? Okay, are you done? Okay, yes. Now, do you agree with me that it is relevant to the discussion whether you accept contradictions, logical contradictions to be false or not? Oh no, I don't think it's relevant even to your goal. Oh my god. Dude. I can explain Dude. I can explain why. Am I gonna be allowed to reply or not? <laughs> it's like, like it's a so very ridiculous out of this? No, but but now you're not reason. allowing me now you're not allowing no it's not because it's not I don't know Let him explain. I don't know why. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like, it's like little children. They're not allowing anybody to talk. Look, you can convince me of the belief that in what given world classical are we not allowing you to talk. Uh, Oh, in the world where you just cut me off like two seconds ago. That, yeah, that world. for the past like four hours. Right. right, that world where you just cut me off again in that world. Right, so <laughs> there's you can convince me, you can still convince me of a belief, right, which is the belief that given classical logic, it would follow that this argument is sound. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's okay. different from just saying, thank you. Thank you. right, that's but just, go, that's don't, different. Don't, I don't know, I know I'm being denied. cut off. I know I'm being cut off. I was promised, I was promised. I, well, I was promised. I was promised that I was gonna answer the question, right? So okay, I don't want to cut off. We got your answer. Oh, I wasn't done. Much. No, but I'm not okay, done with my answer. answer, brother. We got your answer. We got oh, your I'm not answer. done. Now let's come back. Oh no, I'm not done. I'm not done. Let's come back. I'm not done with my answer. What? <laughs> Wait, where am I ask questions if I get? Why was I asking Wait, a question what? if I can't answer? Can we go back to the discussion? Oh no, but uh, but Hadi asked me a question. I need to answer. Yes, answered? it was a yes you or answered. no question. It wasn't. Uh, yes, and you. Okay, and you and answered. You said, We're going. I, yes. I said. Now, no, but uh, I explained. I explained the why the there is like an assumption. Okay, 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 accept, accept, thank okay, you, okay, thank, thank you. But I wasn't done answering. I wasn't done answering. But I don't think. See, I was asking. See, I was asking a question, but I'm not allowed to answer it. Oh my god, we All accept. Right. So we... Hadi, Hadi, but you don't even know what my answer is. We know. Your answer is that if no, classical I just put... logic... Yeah, we can convince you that of the fact that if classical logic is true, and if you accept the classical logic, then you have to accept our... Yeah, but that wasn't uh, fully my answer. But that wasn't fully my answer, though. Okay, if you want to add something more, go on. And then right. we can come back to the discussion. So, so Hadi said he's in the business of convincing me of a belief. And I just said, well... Regardless whether I accept it or not, you can still convince me of a belief. And it's a belief that I'm stipulating of the conversation, that we're assuming classical logic. Now, what I said is, in the sense that I accept classical logic, the law of non-contradiction is in the sense that I take it to be a convention. And, I, I'm, and I'm part of that convention, and so I do accept it as true in that sense. Now I'm done speaking. Now you can continue. Go ahead. So, so does the convention have any bearing on experimental reality? I don't know what you mean by experimental reality because then, reality so we, is posterior outside, to outside logic. Outside the mind and outside the, the, the social world, outside uh, the convention. Right? Not, so if a convention is violated to you, does that have any bearing on reality? Yeah, I'm not, what I'm saying is I'm not sure what you mean by reality absent of a logic in the background. Well, if, if hypothetically, you know, hypothetically, if you were to be convinced that the contingency argument works because its denial entails a logical contradiction. If hypothetically, you know, this was shown to you, would you accept that in reality there is at least one necessary being? Or well, would you say, well, it violates convention, but it doesn't tell us anything about objective reality? Well, I accept in the foreground that it's a justified conclusion, like anything else. But what, what's justified and what's not justified is going to depend on what you take in the background. 
And I'm not sure what it means to talk about the reality absence of a theory in the record. Well, would, would you believe that the conclusion of an argument, uh, a logical argument, describes reality? Well, see, this is by describe reality, do you just mean it's justified in the foreground? No, it explains the objective reality. Does it reflect or correspond to objective reality? Because you said it's just a convention. Like the, well, the see, when you say, when you talk, so when you talk about something like objective reality or something, it sounds like you're assuming some form of like transcendental realism or like metaphysical realism or correspondence theory or something. I mean, I don't hold to any of those views. Okay, what is what is your view? But I don't see how this is like relevant to the discussion. No, I, because so then just to answer it and regardless. On. Look, look. Regardless of like what metaphysics or like what mathematics I hold, it's not going to be. It's not going to. It's not. Guys, it's I don't know why I'm being muted, but it's not going to depend whether the you. argument. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's muting me. But look, what we're disputing is just whether or not, given classical logic, the PSI is a contradiction or not. Like what theory theory of truth I hold or what metaphysics I hold is like not gonna. That's like tangential to the discussion. Okay, so again, we, 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 that was one discussion, but the second discussion now is not even admitting the PSR, right? The second discussion is about whether, logically speaking, there has to be at least one independently existing reality, whether it's... A right, but that's, the same thing is going to apply to that, though. The same, whether or not... going to apply to this? Tell us. Whether, granting, if I... Grant, it's going to depend whether or not granting classical logic you can show that there is a necessary thing or not, even if the PSR is false. That's not, it's not going to be tangential whether... No, we are not uh, saying hold, independent what, what necessity. I'm not... Uh, I'm not uh, look, it doesn't matter what you're saying. The point is that given classical logic, if you think you have a sound argument, it's not going to depend what kind of like theory of truth that I hold to, unless like okay, a theory of truth okay. is going to be like a key premise in your argument. Okay, now what we are saying... So unless uh, unless something is... is like a key... Hold on. Unless something is like a key premise of your argument, don't ask me what I believe or I don't believe. Because that's just like going to be a red herring to the discussion. Okay, what we are saying is that it is... It is... It, Look, it's been, like four, it's been like three hours and you still haven't given me like a single argument. Yeah, what I'm saying I just want the premise... That... Look, how about you do this? Give me yeah. the premises, give me the premises, the conclusion and the rule of inference by which the conclusion follows from the premises. And then let's examine the premises. Because clearly like your attempt at like a Socratic dialect of asking me a question is not making any progress. Yeah, but you don't believe in, in contradiction, right? So when did I say I don't believe in sorry, when did I say I don't believe in contradictions? To be fair, HT, I think what happens is we we talk about the premises of an argument. Ilya Ilias ran, ran through an argument with you and then we always digress into these No, he didn't he didn't. He didn't I can repeat what he said. He oh, okay. no, 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 let's do this. I can this repeat. Then. So let's no, no, that's fine. So look, let's do this. For the for your sake, my sake. And for the room, let's just sort of reset a little bit. So, putting the PSR aside, okay, okay, because you don't you you don't grant it, you don't deny it, but you don't grant it. So, putting that aside, no, no, but I, this, no, but I can't give an argument can. against it. I, mean, I can give an argument against it, but I, but I don't want to go beyond the burden that you have to meet. I can just assume agnosticism. Okay, so let's just go. To, let's have Ilias repeat his argument because he's saying that he doesn't need. The PSR. For okay, the so argument. so so instead so instead of him just like rambling on, how about he just specifies the premises, the conclusion, and the rule of inference by which the conclusion follows? So you have like a formal argument, and then we can like examine the premises. Well, I mean, what form do you you want to have a syllogism? Like, what what form do you want the argument? I I just want the premises and the conclusion and the rule of inference by which it follows. See, syllogism has more than one meaning, but I guess you can say that's a syllogism, yeah. Because there's like the strictly Aristotelian notion of syllogism, and then there's like a more broader. It just means like no, I mean, you specify the premises and the conclusions. Obviously. Oh no, I mean there's like a looser meaning where you just mean even in classical logic, like more neuro logic, you just give the premises and the conclusion, and then the rule of inference. If that's what you mean by syllogism, then yeah, I just want the syllogism. But I want the rule of inference specified as well, just to guarantee that the argument is actually valid, and then we can like examine its soundness. Sir, that's well, I so think we, we, Let's uh, we investigate truth now. That is sophistry. You you obfuscating every every question. That is not philosophy. Well, which not, which question? Well, you are not which question? Truth, sir. 
you are looking Wait, how am I not looking for truth? We're like examining whether the argument is sound or not. I don't care about software state. Let's okay, let's let, let, let I don't know what you mean by truth. We're examining whether the argument is sound or not, but we need okay. to make sure okay. it's valid to begin with. It means with. you're intellectually bankrupt. Wait, how am I intellectually mm -hmm. bankrupt by asking he, for the he's argument? Not, he's the one that hasn't. He, like, look, he's just looking for an argument. Just give the <laughs> argument. Do you have the argument? What's wrong with these people? Like, I'm asking him for the argument. He's claiming he has a sound but, argument. But I'm asking for the argument. Was given a it wasn't. It wasn't. Yes, it was. Here's, yes, here's yeah. what he Remember said. Here's, here's. What's the first premise? I can repeat. What's the first premise? If the argument, argument was given, what's the first so there's, premise? There's, there's, just because an argument isn't given in a particular form that you wanted, it doesn't mean there is. Oh, no, but he didn't give. No, I, but I, but I can argue he didn't give an argument. There's, he didn't give an argument that there's like a necessary argument. All, all he want, said, he all he said, what he what he argued is that ontological propositions are like complex propositions. That's what he was arguing for, and he was all, also no, arguing no, no, for no, that. that, 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 that he was also arguing for, and he, and he also and he also while asking him for an argument for the PSR, begged the question and just assumed the PSR is argument in the mirror case, and I addressed that and I showed that, look. It's not gonna look. You can have an. You can have a series. You can have a set where every element explains the other element, right? Such as there's no element left unexplained. But that's not gonna explain the set as a whole. But to say that the set as a whole requires an explanation is just to demand something like the PSR, and that's the very thing okay. that I ask an argument for. Oh, now, if he has a, but if he has a, no, I want to talk about your set. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about. Okay, your set. so we're not gonna talk about Elias's argument. We can talk about no, this. No, that's part of his argument. You just said it was. So let's just talk okay. about your set. Go, okay, go ahead. Okay, so Ilias is essentially saying, and, and many people will, would be saying, that mm -hmm. uh, a set of infinitely, uh, a set of infinite number of dependent propositions, or dependent... I'm just going to catch that out as explanations, but go ahead. Well, dependent ones, right? Like, dependent, like each proposition is explained by another one. So every proposition in the set depends on another proposition. Okay, so by that you just mean counterfactual dependency? Yes, yes, counterfactual. Okay. Each proposition is counterfactually dependent on another one. So you have okay. this set. So every, 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 every element in the set is going to stand in a counterfactual relationship? Yes, to the, to the next one. Right? So you're saying that you can, the, a set. Uh, Wait, but let's just infinite. clarify. Let's just clarify something. It's the case that every element needs to depend on a further element, not that every element needs to have another element that depends on it. Every element in the set depends on another element in the set. Okay. Right. So mm -hmm. you you are saying that such a set can like can exist. It's possible for this set to exist. Right. And Elias is saying this is. Well, what I'm possible. saying is I don't. What I'm saying is I'm going to be agnostic whether it can exist or not. But I see. Uh, but I'm asking for a contradiction for why such okay, a so, set can exist. So you don't see any reason why it can't exist. That's why I'm asking you for an argument <laughs> for why it can't exist. Okay. So, up uh, uh, is this the main sort of problem you would have? With, with what Elias presented, is that this is really like the point where you don't grant it? Well, the point that I'm not granting is I think the argument regardless depends on something akin to the PSR implicitly or explicitly, and that's what I'm asking an argument for. Okay. Is the where you when you say that the argument is sneaking a PSR, is it at this part or another part of the argument? I think where it's sneaking a problem is when he says that going back to the mirror case, he's saying like even if you can explain the reflection of each mirror with the other, you're not going to explain where the light comes from. But that is just a sneak in a PSR because this is just the Aquinas objection of saying, even okay. if each element can explain. Wait, so I'm, not fair, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not. You asked no, me a but question. You, but, you've repeated but you the asked me. This. Yeah, but you. Yeah, but if you know question, this, then don't the ask. Answer. Okay. So why no, why cut me? Don't cut me off. Even if you know no, it, no, maybe no. someone else. Hold maybe someone. Hold on. H T. Hold on. Hold on. You if you know it, game. maybe someone game. else doesn't Sorry. know it. Oh, bitch boy, if you stop know it, man. Stop I'm not done Here's speak. I'm not done speaking. I was asked a question. I was asked a question. Let me fin. Let me fin. Let me fin.
Let me finish. Let me finish. The, look, I'm not gonna be a mod abuser the where out. I'm only at, I'm only get to answer until you satisfy the. AC, go ahead. But I don't. Want allow to me. Talk. Allow me. Ask me a question. Allow me to. No. 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 I, I don't know, it's like mod abusing me right now, but you ask me a question. I muted myself, so I don't know what to Okay, okay I don't know who's, who else is. Look, it's simple, right? What I'm saying is, if he's if he's merely asking how each set is explained, that's not, that's, that's, that's going to be straightforward. But if he's asking for like the light part, or in like Aquinas' case, why there's this set rather than some other set, that's just to demand. I can just say that that part is brute, and if he rejects that, if he rejects that, then that's just the part where he assumes the piece, something akin to the piece, which is the very thing in question. So if his okay. argument depends on the possibility of not having an explanation for why this set rather than some other set obtains, or why yeah. or why there's like light in the case of the mirrors, then his argument is just assuming the PSR right there. And so his argument still depends on the PSR, even if he claims it doesn't. Okay, okay, great. So let's forget the analogy for a second. All right, let's just focus on the set of all dependent propositions, an infinite number of them. Just talk about that. Okay. This seems to be where, would you agree, apart from the analogy, which you find it to be a false analogy, this seems to be- I never said it's a false analogy. I well, think it's a perfect, don't like the I think it's like, think I think it's, it's like, no, no, you I never, the question on no, the what I said, what I said is like, it's a perfect analogy to show why he's begging the question. Okay. Either way, either way, apart from the analogy, it's this mm -hmm. infinite, this the set of infinite dependence, whether that can exist or not. That's the disagreement. No, the disagreement is on whether or not there's like an implicit assumption of the PSR or not. Oh, I don't think there's an assumption. But no, but that's what see. I'm disputing. Well, that's what I'm disputing, right? Okay, okay. So let's see. Let's, so let's, let's think about. Yeah, let's right. Think so let's just take let's, let's just take counterfactual dependencies, right? That we're stipulating yeah. that everything in the set needs to like counterfactually depend on something else, right? Um, now, you can have like now this is you can have like a set where every element yeah. counterfactually yeah. depends on some other element in okay. the set, such as there's no there's no element in the set. That's yeah. not counterfactually dependent on something else, and that's not going to have like a formal contradiction, because we can because this set there's nothing there's not going to be anything relevantly true of that relation. That's not true of the ordering relation in the countable infinite of the of the of the set of natural numbers, right? So we can say that like every number, every number in the set has a greater number, right? Now just take the just take the now we can put like and now we can take the set of natural numbers and we can take the set of these dependent elements. We can put them in a bijection and just like, and there can be put in a bijection and just like mm. every, and it's just got to follow that, like, every that element is going to have, every element is going to have a previous member, right? And that's all required okay. for this relation no, to hold. That's, that's the only condition that's required I, I for this relation to hold. Wait, 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 that's, wait, that's not, so there's not, that's, not, that's not oh, true. See, Zero doesn't have a previous element. You choose the wrong set. Choose the, the integers, not the naturals. It, the integers are bounded below. I, I don't think integers. your number thing. The naturals are bounded. But zero, zero, wait, 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 to the guy, wait, 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 to the guy who doesn't know what he's talking about. Zero is not, not a natural number, dumbass. Well, one then. I said the one, set of natural. I said the set of natural that. numbers. Zero is not the natural number. The fuck is wrong? Okay, with you? then one, man. Then, then I just said the set. Stop swearing, bro. Did okay, I, that, I that said the set down, of bro. natural numbers. Yeah, I said stop the swearing, please, 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 calm down. Stop swearing. Okay, I, I said the set of natural numbers. Zero is not the natural HD, number. HD, okay, HD, what's wrong with this? Rude? Wait. Okay. Let me. Wait. Wait. I'm being rude because this guy interjected himself and he doesn't. And he doesn't even know what the set of natural numbers. Stop raising your voice. Look, look, look wait, wait. it's all right. Stop raising your voice. I'm going okay. to mute people now. Carlos was saying something. He, he, HD, let him say it. Then you can reply. Carlos, when you say what you're going to say, can you explain your background, why you're saying this thing? Yeah. So my, I am a mathematician. Okay. So you telling me that I don't know what I'm talking about. I That's mean, correct. Yeah. You, you, you should know. You should know that you don't know what you're talking about. So natural numbers, right, they can start from one or they can start from zero depending of what school of mathematics you, 
you want to go for, right? It's not entirely well defined if if one should be the the first number of the natural numbers or zero. It it some books will say one, some books will say zero. But regardless, if you want to start with zero or with one, they are bounded below. Doesn't matter which definition you want to take. Right, so done. No, I'm not done. Okay. So regardless of what definition, natural numbers are bounded below. So you cannot say that only because I said zero, there is something before zero in the naturals. Or if I have said one, there is nothing before one. Okay. So but, but wait, wait, why are you talking about before? Because you were talking about a dependent relationship and you were saying no, that not... any natural number will have something before them. So I said to you, choose the integers which are not bounded below, and then you can say that your contingent argument continues all the way to infinity, to minus infinity, instead of being bounded below where you have a lower bound. Yeah, you're just confused. So here's the problem. What, for one, in, in the standard usage of the word natural numbers doesn't include zero. When we include zero, we're talking about whole numbers, not natural numbers. No, That's you, the first problem. Okay. The second problem. The second problem is, that I said that every natural number is going to have a successor, right? And I'm taking that to be akin to this dependency relationship. Now, that relation is true of the set of natural numbers, that every natural number is going to have a successor. Because guess what? That just follows from the Peano axioms, that every natural number has a successor. And that's precisely why you can't count to infinity, because for every natural number, there's going to be a natural number that succeeds it, right? So I'm taking the success relation, which is true of the set of natural numbers, which does not include zero because we're talking about the set of natural numbers, not the set of whole numbers, right? Um, maybe there are some, maybe there are like some non-standard set as books, textbooks or something that use like natural numbers for zero or something. But the standard usage is that natural numbers doesn't include zero, while it's like whole numbers. When we say whole numbers, it includes zero. Now, in that case, in the in in either case, in either zero case or the or in the whole number case or the natural number case, the success relation is going to hold. That any that any natural number is going to have a successor, right? For in the case of one, the success is going to be two, and so on and so on ad infinitum. Now I'm taking that success relation to be true, uh, to be akin to the dependency relation. If nothing else is specified, it's just going to be the case that like every element in the set is going to stand in this relation. In the case of the countable infinite, the, the set of natural numbers, or in the case of this like set we're talking about of dependencies. Okay. So this whole talk uh, about like uh, uh, lower orders and higher orders like completely relevant to the point that I made. No, I mean it's fine if you want to take the su the successor as the dependent relationship, saying like I'm not that, taking it as a dependence relationship. I'm just saying that it's gonna every condition okay. that's true of one is gonna be true of the other. So there's not gonna be a symmetry breaker for one or the other unless it specifies but, some further relations of on, uh, on dependence analogy, relations. Does does each like what does each natural number in in your set? Does the truth value of four depend on the truth value of well, they're three? Not they're not the proposition. <laughs> they're not proposition. Exactly, exactly. So this analogy just doesn't approximate what we're talking about in the first place. Well, but even if you look, no, even no, if you're no, talking about not proposition, you it? even Why if you're talking, look, look, they're not proposition. Oh, because like, like the truth. Look, in fact, it's quite the opposite. I could say yeah, it's just a bunch of when numbers. it comes to the nature of three or four or any of these natural numbers, I could simply say that to derive any one of them you have to start with one look even if that, look correct. look so, so look nothing turns nothing turns on this no no i'm playing your analogy but nothing I'm turns on this no 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 yeah, but nothing okay, turns on this on. even if you're no, even if your set AT, is let off. me finish let me finish uh -huh. you gave an analogy now i want to dispute your analogy number one okay. these numbers so so where we're talking the original thing we're talking about and by the way i have to go soon so i'm not running away i just have other things to do okay so just make, make sure you allow me to reply before you leave them sure. because okay okay so because look, nothing turns on this the point still stands regardless if you're talking no, no, about propositions no, 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 no. Oh, okay let's see let's see let's see right we're going to talk it out so okay we're originally talking about the mm -hmm. set of dependent propositions mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about where you have counterfactual dependence but what turns relations on this among them. Okay, no, but that's just what we're talking about, so I'm restating. Yeah, but what turns through, on this, so? It would be two Hold through on. infinity, because one would be the proposition upon which and, and, all of those depend. Yeah, okay, so let me just explain. Right, no, you got it the other way around. HT, let, me, let me finish, and then you can go ahead. So what we're really talking about, right, 
is the set of all dependent propositions with an infinite mm -hmm. number of them. That's what we're actually talking right. about. Right. So how is this called, how is this like relevant to the point that I made? Look, when what you I'm asked gonna, me, can I finish? Well, let can me I finish? explain, bro. I let me explain, bro. I, I have to go. That's all. So, like, I just want to get my piece in, and then you know, you'll talk to others. I don't know. So, oh, so you're not gonna listen to the reply? No, I will. I but I'm not gonna be able to talk back after. I'm not gonna okay, be go able ahead. reply to your go reply. Ahead. So I'm trying to say everything now because I have to. I'm gonna be pushed away, pulled away. Okay. So I'm going to say what I'm going to say. So just give me a couple of minutes because this is like my last word just for the mm -hmm. current time. Okay. I'm, I, I don't mean to sort of ruin the conversation with you. It just, I, uh, my time. Yeah, just make your point. Go ahead. Okay. So let me make my point. So I have two points to make. So number one, what we're talking about is a set of dependent realities or dependent things or dependent propositions that are all counterfactually dependent. That's what we're talking about. So I have two points to make. First point I want to make is that, you know, you've mentioned this before in a prior conversation, this set of natural numbers that go to infinity is, does, is not a good analogy for the set of all dependent propositions. And it's not a good analogy for two reasons. Number one, unlike the dependent propositions where each proposition is counterfactually dependent upon its prior, okay? Each number is not a proposition that's counterfactually dependent on its prior. So there's a mismatch there. Right? The analogy doesn't match. The second reason why it's a bad analogy is that if we just consider you know, the nature of all these natural numbers, and if we want to talk about any sort of dependence, I could say, you know, from a Pythagorean perspective, you know, all the numbers are actually conceptually dependent on the number one. So that the set example of infinite numbers, uh, if it's going to be used as an analogy, and I'm not using it, but if it was going to be used as an analogy, I think it actually serves the argument that I'm making, where you have an independent, in this case, an independent number. So that's my first point. My second point, and I'm only making this now because I have to go. My second point is this. So our argument is to simply show that there has to be an, at least one independent reality. Now, each member of this infinite set is dependent. That's just by definition. That's just the scenario we set up. So no member in that infinite set is de is independent. Okay. The set. Let's take the set itself. Now, it, the set is contingent. Okay. It is contingent. Right. Now you might just say that hey, the set is brutally contingent. So there's no issue. But here's the thing. In this case. The set itself is the aggregate of the members. So the set is not a brute contingent. It is a real contingent that's dependent upon the members themselves. So you have here, you, the, each member is just a dependent. The set is dependent on the members. And if you just have dependence, even an infinite number of dependent realities, you, you basically, this thing cannot be grounded in any way. You would have to have either a necessary proposition or a brutally contingent proposition that is independent, and this whole thing would have to rely on that. So this is like one of the, it's, I have more arguments to offer, but this is just one of the arguments uh, for this. Mm -hmm. You also have a well, that argument is irrelevant, by the way. Just you also, misunderstood you also the critique. No, it's not, okay. Maybe, maybe. You also have a circularity. You also have a circularity problem here, because each you will, you will say that look, this is fine. Each proposition or member of the set is just explained by the next one. So you know, technically, each one has an explanation, a counterfactual explanation. That's what you'll say. That's what many people say. But here's the thing: if this set were just a, a finite number of dependent propositions, everybody would agree that it cannot obtain by itself. There would have to be some independent proposition to yeah, ground that's just a question. Number. So no, no, it's not begging the question. We're not talking about uh, PSRs. We're just talking about dependent and independent. So even if you, I'm saying that some independent, it could be a brute contingent. It could be a necessity, but you need one independent to ground a set of. Oh, well, that's still some kind, some kind of. PSR. One, no, no, it's not. It, it's actually not. I haven't evoked PSR. I'm actually saying it of the opposite. No, you just in, what you're saying is now everything. No, an independent reality, an independent proposition 
could be something that's necessary or it could be a brute contingent. Yeah, but I'm even not saying you're assuming the strong piece. Are you? I'm saying you're still assuming a no, that's explanation. Not a PSR. No, no, no. I haven't assumed a PSR. I, I've oh, not. No. Well, I I'm can explain how. That I'm, 